So, a very good afternoon to all respected participants. Uh, resource person, Dr. Ashwini Kumar Bharadwaj, sir, has uh, joined our cloud meeting. So, on behalf of UGC Malvia Mission Training Center, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Maratwada University, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar, I welcome him. Uh, to this afternoon session of NEP orientation and sensitization program. And uh, I would now hand over the session to him for further proceedings. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, Rafael, sir. Good afternoon, uh, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so we have almost 75 participants at this point of our time. Yes, and yes, which language would you like to prefer? Hindi English, sir. Hindi. Pan India. It is a Pan India course, so Hindi English will help a lot us. Okay, 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 okay. So at the outset, I am thankful to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratwada University for inviting me to deliver a talk on national skill development, national educational policy, and the skill development in higher education. Uh, since uh, it's a very long session of almost three hours, uh, I am going to conduct it in almost two sessions. We will have a break of 10 minutes each after an hour. Okay. And based on that, we will continue. Our last 15 to 20 minutes will be open for discussion. And we will have uh, discussion questions or whatever comes in, into it. In between, if you have any queries, uh, I would not. I would recommend not to put it in the message box right now, because uh, it goes cumulatively. So I would recommend everyone to, if they have genuine questions, they are most welcome at the end of the session. That is going to be around at five fifteen. Okay, so by five fifteen, we are going to take certain questions for sure. So when we talk about 
national education policy we all know 2020 is something which we all were actually looking for from quite a many years after 36 years uh, we got one policy which seems to be yeah i would request everyone to mute their mics okay so we can try to get as much as clarity if you are going, not going to mute the mics probably we're going to have more of the confusions okay so when we talk about national education policy it is actually revision and revamping of all the aspects in education including educational structure regulation governance and even skill development is not uh, left apart okay so when we talk about skill development, when we see the gross enrollment ratio, skill development cannot be seen in isolation. Okay, We are supposed to see something in the, what is happening in the school sector also. If we see in school sector also from standard six onwards, the government is putting it across that uh, vocational education has to be introduced in the early school. Progressively it is being done so that when they are coming into the higher education, they are not completely new to it. The children are going to have hands-on experience in the school setups itself. And if you see that, there are not many incubation centers, utter wrinkling labs, uh, innovation centers are being put it up in the school setups also, so that uh, the children are not very new to vocational education as such. No doubt, higher education has put it uh, in a more clear perspective that what how they would like to see uh, vocational and the skill development coming into the force. As of now, we are thinking to prepare our students for 21st century. This national education policy is quite forward-looking document as such. We are thinking of preparing our youth to be a global citizen so who can get into any workspace and is going to be accommodating himself and giving the best. So someone who is going to be a global citizen, an empowered citizen, that is what the basic purpose of NEP at this point of your time when it comes to the skill development perspective. And we have seen it out that the gross enrollment ratio, if you talk about from the pre-primary section, the students coming up to the colleges, is not that great or is not that significant at this point of a time, which is somewhere close to 21%. But somewhere after implementation of NEP 2020, the Ministry of Education and the other uh, ministries are looking forward that this enrollment, uh, gross enrollment ratios in higher education should be close to 50%. At this point of a time, we find it out the learner, the first, uh, you may say, the learners, those who are reaching to the colleges, is somewhere close to 21%. By 20, 2025, the department is focusing on that the learner should go into higher education system with exposure of vocational education. By 2025, we will take out two years out of this because the implementation of 2020 actually happened a bit late because of the pandemic, which we all know. So now, instead of 2020, 25, it could be like 25 or 27, that the 50% of the learners must have a background of vocational education when they are touching to the colleges. <clears throat> we have seen it out. There are many recommendations which are being done by the national education policy. As we know, there are no hard separations now. Now, when we talk about hard separations, it itself has given a very significant emphasis because previously there were hard separations between curricular, uh, this one and extracurricular. So the moment it was supposed to be a curricular aspect, the emphasis by the schools and by the colleges were more on curricular aspects rather than on extracurricular aspects. National education policy for the first time has taken away this hard separation away. There is no hard separation that's this is going to be uh, a curricular aspect and this is going to be an extracurricular aspect. The moment we say uh, no hard separation, what it means then? They are going to be treated, both are going to be treated at par. Both 
like when we used to talk about somebody is joining a particular club or a sports or a drawing or a music or what i would say uh, in the skills they were being treating that you are doing something extra extra curricular activity which is not the part of the regular curriculum as such national education policy for the first time has taken away this separation now there is no going to be separation it is going to be taken as part so if you are even doing an extra curricular you are going to be given the uh, marks percentages or the way the university evaluate nowadays so cgp scores or whatever it may be it's going to come so there is no hard separations between extracurricular curricular between vocational and academic streams in order to eliminate harmful you may say hierarchies and the differences nep has brought that you no know, hard separations in for so hard separations are being taken care of it and people uh, students will be given the choices that these uh, courses whichever they are taking will be considered as mark oriented will be considered as grade oriented no separations as such at the same time we are supposed to see that students will be offered equal opportunities and these equal opportunities are going to be given to the students when we talk about equal opportunities about what we say the students are going to choose up the subjects after grade 8 why i am getting into the school first because something is done in the schools and then it is going to come up to the colleges so what is schools are doing right now so schools are going to be encouraged that the students are offered choices the moment i say choices it's going to be student centric approach rather than the teacher centric approach so the moment stu student centric means students are going to pick up the subjects including the vocationals and it will going to be starting from standard 8th onwards to the standard 12th and we have seen after the secondary stage we are going to have a four year uh, graduations or uh, what we can say the multiple exit multiple entry right now we are going through a system of 10 plus 2 plus 3 now this system is going to change when we are going to get into the higher education it's going to be four years the moment we say four years this is going to be a multi disciplinary study building on the subject oriented pedagogy and curricular style of middle stage but with a greater depth attention and life aspiration flexibility of this to the students to choose the subjects most of the universities most of the colleges today have picked up this they are picking up these uh, uh, what i would say national education policies in the true spirit and implementing it into the higher education with the child the learner the student has to pick up the subject so the choice of the subject in particular would continue to have option in exit after 12th grade and next phase of the post vocation even in the higher education most of them even if you are not belonging to a engineering background or you are not belonging to a vocational background as such every year means in the third year and the fourth year the student has to offer an internship or an apprenticeship learning by doing is going to be the mantra for the vocational courses so it's it's going to be something where the child the student has to pick up the options are to be given by the universities and the colleges so internship is going to be like it is going to be a job instructional training which normally used to happen for the engineering background students it is going to be very much visible rather it's going to happen in the conventional art science and commerce also now the challenge is how we are supposed to introduce it how we are going to make our own subjects vocational as such when it comes to the languages when it comes to the history when it comes to the civics or in some cases uh, psychology as such or public administration as such or for the commerce and the management so the challenges are there okay we are going to talk about the challenges also in our uh, complete session so these you know, hard separations are being taken away students are going to be given uh, more choices even the voc in the vocation and uh, students will be given increased flexibility and in choice of subject to study particularly after the secondary school including the secondary school also
what i mean the flexibility the students are going to pick up the subjects which subjects they like which subjects they don't like what they interest what they have the aptitude so the role of the teacher is going to be the role as a facilitator the teacher is going to be more of a facilitator as a guide what the child actually needs he or she is going to be given the maximum cho choices there is going to be integration of vocational programs into the mainstream education till now the vocational subjects were being taken as a separate unit but this national education policy is bringing something where the student is going to have more of a flexibility at the same time the integration is going to also be going to be brought into it when we talk about the integration of the vocational programs how we are supposed to bring it out into the mainstream the culture has to be brought into it and to not too much of the surprise there are 100 kendriya vidyalayas or the central schools which the central government has already picked up to develop them as a modern school and these model schools are going to be uh, the pilot project at this point of a time and it is going to start from the next academic year that is from 24 25 and seeing the success how this is being done because integration of vocational schools if we even talk about puthari commission if you talk about the other uh educational uh, commissions they have also recommended at one point of a time that the vocational education is something which we are supposed to look forward but nep this time round has given a special emphasis that we are supposed to integrate a vocational education programs into the main uh, mainstream education in a phased manner including beginning with vocational exposure at early years in middle and secondary school so somewhere it is it has been designed in a such a way that this early intervention in the vocational education is going to start from the school itself at the same time loka vidya an important vo vocational knowledge development uh, developed in india will made accessible to students through integration into vocational education courses when we say loka vidya what is the local skills as such if you go into mm, uh, the vocational uh, courses okay somewhere it is being seen that the local skill is basically being uh, you may say sideline and we have high tech skills which are being brought into the courses means working on the lathe machines working with electrical instruments working with uh you may say plumbing working with some other things okay but what about the local skills which a student will or is going to be in demand okay so the loka vidya is also being taken into consideration so when you are making when we are making i think somebody is on a mic so please mute the mic if possible okay fine thank you so <clears throat> how can we how we can bring local uh, skill based uh, into it and uh, strengthening that we can uh, definitely do that vocational education will be integrated in all schools it's not going to be choice right now it definitely uh, so with the model schools but in over the years to come it is going to be made uh, something which is going to be integrated in all the schools and higher education institution in a phased manner over the next decade so it's going to be a long process as we all know nep in natural has to reach to the maximum by 2035 that's the objective of the commission okay and 2035 it is going to be periodically checked rechecked but it's going to be done in a phased manner it's not going to be done in a haphazard manner it's going to be done in a systematic phased manner at the same time in the next year focus areas for vocational education will be chosen based on the skill gaps now there are plenty of the skill gaps if we talk about okay uh, we normally talk about the skill gaps and we seldom work on these skill gaps okay when we talk about the skill gap okay what what exactly is the skill gap skill gap is something which what the industry is looking for and what the educational or the academia is actually offering okay and that gap is very very evident uh, if we see in in, uh, in most of the 
what I would say, technically driven courses. High profile, uh, you may say, uh, engineering, uh, engineering courses. When these students go back for the workspace, they find it out that their skills, whatever they have acquired in the academia, is not able to match up somewhere with their, uh, what I would say, practical uh, requirement. So industry is always having this opinion that whatever is being offered at the college levels or the university level, there is certain gap and this gap has to be bridged in. And this batch can be only bridged in when we will have a proper industry academia interface. What the industry is looking for and what my academics is offering. So if it, there is a closeness, if, if there is a positive co correlation, if I talk about what the industry is asking and what we are giving, probably yes, the gap can be reduced. But at this point of a time, we are supposed to see that there is gap. Okay? There is a huge gap, which uh, sometimes uh, becomes a hindrance that the industries are not okay in accepting our students as uh, ready-made or ready to be uh, uh, employable. Okay, Most of the industries have always a complaint that they have to work on them for six, six months to bring that their basic requirement, the basic uh, skill development to a certain level so that they become actually working. So that gap has to be taken into consideration that how this gap can be introduced, uh, reduced. I think we can do it through proper gap analysis. We can see that we have maximum industry academia interface and that can bring bridge somewhere okay, close to it, I would like to say. Bridging can be done, but may not be completely taken care of it. Most of the private universities are doing it relentlessly uh, since their uh, NEP has been introduced. They're doing it. And conventional universities do have their challenges and they're supposed to bring into it. Individual institutions that are already adopters must innovate to find models and practices that work them, share these with other institutions through mechanisms. There are institutions of repute, okay? We can talk about uh, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, IITs, National Institutes. Uh, you have National Institute of Technology. Now, these institutes already have basic, uh, you may say, infrastructure, technology, skills, which uh, actually are being required. Now, the time has come that these resources, whether it is manpower resources, technology transfers, has to be taken into a, to the different setups in different colleges, in different institutions. So we are looking for, as the NEB is proposing for clustering or maximum utilization of the resources, both manpower and the technology and the technology transfer, so that it can help extend to reach the most students, most learners, I would like to say, different models of vocational education, uh, internship, apprenticeship can also be experimented by higher education institutions. See, we all are into uh, what I would say workable solutions or we all are looking forward for something uh, which can be of uh, outcome based. Okay, We are supposed to be in the process and this process can be enriching if you keep on experimenting, if you keep on doing something trial and error, NEP has given us a lot of scope for experimentation. And this is going to be one of the experiments where the resources are going to be utilized. Incubation centers will be set up in higher education. We have seen it out. Most of the universities today have incubation centers. Most of the private universities have an incubation center. Uh, it is being funded by the uh, Ministry of Education, Minist uh, Science and Technology Department, uh, in case of the technology inputs, uh, as we say, used to talk about AICT in funding of the projects. But higher education institutions have to go with the partnership with the industries, because that is something which is the demand and which NEP is re-emphasizing. We cannot do it solo. Okay, we cannot as an industry. We may have the best of the brain in academics, okay? But when it comes to the industry, when it is being needed by the industry, probably the best of the brain may not have that skill, which the skills which the industry is looking for. So NEP, National Education Policy, is strongly recommending 
that we must have partnership with industries. Without partnership, probably we will not able to excel or we may not able to come up to the level of what the industry is expecting. And we have seen it out in most of the industries, somewhere the industries have came forward to adopt a particular course, or they have asked for certain changes, designing of the course, curriculum, so that it suits to their requirement. The National Skill Qualification Framework, as we all know, NSFQ, will be detailed further in each discipline, vocation, and profession. As we all know, National Skill Qualification Framework, NSFQ, now they are going to get into more micro. When we used to be typical ask about the skills, we always see skills happening in uh, technical wings, we all the subjects, or the faculties, or the streams. Or the most you can get into the management or the commerce and the management. But now this NSFQ is getting down with all the disciplines. When I say all the disciplines, it means all the streams, it means all the faculties, it means all the verticals, okay, subjects. They are putting their heart and the soul into it. But how they are supposed to bring it out, a vocational or professional aspect in these subjects. Further, Indian standards will be aligned with the international standards classification of occupation maintained by the International Labour Organization. Because in the beginning itself, I've said, the skill development or vocationalization in higher education that we are talking about, we are talking about creating a workforce which is going to be capable of competing worldwide. You just can't think of India alone or you can't think of Southeast Asia alone. You can't think about Europe. You cannot think of America in isolation or uh, elsewhere, uh, Soviet route, Russia in that context. We are supposed to prepare the uh, learner who is able to compete with any any global uh, this one. So international standards, we are supposed to create higher thresholds for our own standards, qualities, so that even if it, a student goes elsewhere, he is capable of performing well. So international labor organization standards have to be maintained somewhere. This framework will provide the basis of recognition of prior learning. As we all know, sometimes uh, a typical we talk about that the learner knows, but he's not being certified or he has no equivalent certificate. Okay, Work uh, experience-wise, they are being completely enriched. They have complete knowledge about it, but they don't have a piece of paper which says that they are equivalent to it. So a major skill uh, Equivalence initiative is also being taken by Skill Development of India or National Skill Development uh, in India. Now, equivalence certificates are going to come into existence. So that is going to make a, a change okay? because the market definitely asks for the certification. Sometimes you do have a knowledge, but if you don't have a certification, it actually uh, somewhere works as a hindrance. So equivalence certificates are going to be done with the prior knowledge or practical experience with the relevant level of the framework. Definitely the framework or somewhere whenever we are giving the equivalence, it should match with the standards, it should match with the thresholds, it should match with the framework itself. The credit-based framework will be facilitate mobility across general and educational education. As we all know, national education policy has brought up credit transfer system also. The moment we say about credit transfer or credit based, a child has or the learner has the liberty to pick up a different credits through electives. The choice is given to the school learner. He can pick up and these credits can be transferred. These credits can be uh, transferred to different courses uh, in vertical movement, in horizontal, uh, even in uh, places. The it can be carry forwarded from one institute to another institute. He or she can keep it into the bank also. Bank is the credit bank itself. Now, these uh, aspects are there, which has to be uh, looked into when we talk about the credit-based education. But no doubt, uh, more electives, more choices given to the students. And these choices are going to make a, a path-breaking impact. Okay. 
but for that we are supposed to be ready and then we when we talk about the readiness okay we are supposed to see how we are going to go ahead what is the way forward okay as we all know nep has complete framework it is the most robust it has been best articulated in the forms of words it has the vision now there are certain challenges also the moment i say challenges now these challenges are what are these challenges okay number one when we we are talking about skill development okay when we are talking about bringing skill development uh, at an early school intervention program itself okay and what challenges we are going to see these challenges are going to be priyanka can you please mute your mobile uh, this mic priyanka thank you so uh, even 149 okay whenever you log in please see that you have mute your mic okay so as i mentioned jaise maine aapse kaha ki nep ek bahut acha aur ek revolutionary document और जब हम बात कर रहे हैं कि इसको स्किल डेवलपमेंट हमने स्कूल से शुरू कर रहे हैं और स्कूल से इसकी शुरुआत होगी और वो कॉलेजेस तक जाएगा हर सब्जेक्ट में इसको इंट्रोड्यूस करना है हर फैकल्टी में इसको इंट्रोड्यूस करना है तो कैसे इंट्रोड्यूस कर पाएंगे उसकी चैलेंजेस क्या हैं और उसके ऊपर हम लोग एक्शन क्या ले सकते हैं क्योंकि सिर्फ चैलेंजेस बता के नहीं हो पाएगा चैलेंजेस बताना आसान हो जाता है लेकिन उसके लिए हम क्या कर सकते हैं हम लोग क्या कर पाएंगे कि नहीं कर पाएंगे वो भी देखना बहुत जरूरी है तो पहला जो चैलेंज है फॉरमोस्ट चैलेंज जिसको कह सकते हैं ओवरकमिंग सोशल स्टेटस हायर की एसोसिएटेड विद वोकेशनल एजुकेशन एक बहुत बड़ा जिसको कह सकते हैं कि एक सोशल स्टेटस वाली बात होती है भैया क्या सीख रहा है आपका उसको क्या सिखाया जा रहा है स्कूल में क्या स्किल दिया जा रहा है तो कहीं ना कहीं एक स्टेटस से जुड़ा हुआ ये प्रश्न है क्या स्टेटस है वो और स्टेटस का जो हायर है इसको सोशल स्टेटस हायर की को है वो जो वोकेशनल कोर्सेज के साथ में रखे थे क्योंकि ये पहली बार प्रयास नहीं हुआ है अगर महाराष्ट्र में देखें तो एम कोर्स समकक्ष हुआ करता है ग्यारहवीं और बारहवीं के लिए लेकिन उनकी तरफ जाने वालों का जो एक दृष्टिकोण है कि इसकी क्या एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी हो पाएगी इसकी मार्केट में क्या स्टेटस होगा क्योंकि उसका कहीं ना कहीं सोशल स्टेटस से संबंध लगाया जाता है उसको हम लोग कैसे ओवर पावर कर सकते हैं या फिर उस पर हम लोग कैसे ओवरकम कर पाएंगे उसके लिए so overcoming social status hierarchy is associated with the vocational education how we can do it orientation of awareness programs to change the general perception and attitude towards vocational education that's the biggest challenge because that's the biggest challenge because there is no awareness about vocational programs so the full video upload hoga Roll number one forty six. Please mute yourself. Because it's create disturbance for others. If you, yeah, I'm going to please one forty six. Can you mute or? Uh, thank you. If if you have done it out, thank you. Or if you have not done it, please don't speak. Okay, in between. That is going to be my request to you. so the first and the foremost program to overcome the social status hierarchy we we are supposed to we are supposed to create as a teacher we are supposed to create an awareness program to change the general perception and attitude towards vocational education kya kar raha hai ek bolte hai na vocational course liya to bahut bar pucha jata hai kya kar raha hai nahi wo to kuch to skill seekh raha hai kuch to kar raha hai स्कूल में उसको कुछ सिखाया जा रहा है वो क्या सीख रहा है तो बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकली सीख रहा है वो क्या सीख रहा है तो बेसिक मोबाइल रिपेयरिंग सीख रहा है 
वो क्या सीख रहा है तो बेसिक ड्रेस डिजाइनिंग सीख रहा है वो क्या सीख रहा है तो बेसिक बेकरी प्रोडक्ट्स के बारे में सीख रहा है तो क्या कर लेगा उससे क्या वो इंजीनियर बन जाएगा उससे क्या वो बहुत बड़ा आदमी बन जाएगा ये परसेप्शन जो हम लोग लेके चलते हैं हम ये परसेप्शन जो कौन बोल रहे हैं विल यू प्लीज म्यूट योर माइक वन फोर्टी सिक्स ओके इफ यू डूइंग समथिंग एल्स यू कैन लीव दिस Because this is a recorded program, okay? And if you are going to create some noise in between, it is going to distract my attention also. So please abide by that. So, so the basic perception about the skill development. That what you are going to do out of this, okay? If you are learning this, how do you do it? I have only these are one sentence whole time. I would request the host to please mute one forty six. One forty six. So I have muted one forty six. Okay. So anyone who else is there, not mute. Please mute yourself. Okay. So this basic aspect of creating the awareness. Okay. That vocational educations are good for nothing. That's the general perception of the society. ये society लेके चल रहा है. क्या लेके चल रहा? कि vocational करके क्या कर लेगा? Skill लेके क्या कर लेगा? क्या बन जाएगा उससे? लेकिन अगर हम देखें तो पहले पहला हमारा जो काम है ये चैलेंजेस हमको शायद कॉलेज में भी आने वाली हैं जब हम वो पहली बार इंट्रोड्यूस करेंगे स्किल्स को ये चैलेंज हमें वहां पे भी आएगा लेकिन हमें अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करना होगा उनके एटीट्यूड में उनका जो मत है उनका जो विचार है उस विचार को भी क्योंकि स्किल है तो कल है ओके अगर अपने पास कुछ स्किल है तो शायद हम कल कुछ कर पाएंगे अगर स्किल नहीं होगा तो शायद हम ना कर पाए तो पहला काम होगा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम्स क्रिएट करने होंगे जनरल परसेप्शन को चेंज करने के लिए एटीट्यूड को चेंज करने के लिए कि वोकेशनल एजुकेशन जो आप समझ रहे हो वो नहीं है ये काफी आगे का है ये हमें फ्यूचर ओरिएंटेड है और इसी की जरूरत हमें आगे जाके पढ़ने वाली नो डाउट थेरीज हमें इंपॉर्टेंट रहेंगी लेकिन उसके साथ में लगने वाला जो स्किल है अब वो स्किल हार्ड हम लोग कई बार हार्ड स्किल्स की बात करते हैं तो सॉफ्ट स्किल्स के बारे में भी बात Vocational exposure to children through grade six onwards in all secondary and higher education. कैसे हो सकता है ये कि अगर हम कक्षा से छः से ही शुरू कर दें कि vocational education है एक component रहेगा एक subject रहेगा जैसे मैंने शुरू में कहा आपसे कि बहुत ज़्यादा hard separations नहीं रहेंगे curricular और extra curricular में जब वो separation नहीं रहेंगे parents को मालूम है कि यहाँ इस इसमें भी वो evaluate होगा उसमें भी वो इवेल्युएट होगा तो वो उसको उतना ज्यादा तवज्जो दें उसको उतना सिग्निफिकेंस दें आज हम क्या देखते हैं कि जो एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर है उसको मार्जिनलाइज किया गया है उसको साइड ट्रैक किया जाता है कहीं ना कहीं क्योंकि उसमें मार्क्स नहीं होते क्योंकि उसका कहीं इंक्लूड इंक्लूजन नहीं होता ज्यादा से ज्यादा इंक्लूजन कहाँ पे होता है शायद उनको ग्रेडिंग मिल जाए हाँ उन्होंने ये भी किया लेकिन उनके उसके ओवरऑल मेरिट में वो उतना ज्यादा ध्यान नहीं रख पाते हैं इसलिए स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स से और जितना अर्ली इंटरवेंशन होगा और जितना जल्दी होगा वो उतना ज्यादा आगे जाके एक रूप होता जाता है वो कहीं ना कहीं उस उसके उसमें इंक्लूज इंक्लूज हो जाता है इंक्लूसिव हो जाता है वो जाके उसको बाहर का नहीं लगता है जब वो कॉलेज में जाएगा उसको लगता है कहीं कहीं ना कहीं ये सिस्टम में इनरूट हो चुका है 
कहीं ना कहीं ये मेरे कल्चर में आ चुका है तो इसको वोकेशनल एजुकेशन को कहीं ना कहीं कल्चर में लाना बहुत ज्यादा सिग्निफिकेंट होगा और उसको कल्चर में लाने के लिए जो एक्शन लिया जा सकता है कि वो है कि हम लोग इसको स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स से इंट्रोड्यूस करेंगे इंफॉर्मेशन एजुकेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन एंड मीडिया कैंपेन्स हमें शायद बहुत ज्यादा मीडिया कैंपेन्स की जरूरत पड़े क्यों क्योंकि आपको एक थॉट प्रोसेस को चेंज करना है आपको एक एटीट्यूड को चेंज करना है आपको परसेप्शन को चेंज करना है तो आज का सबसे इफेक्टिव मीडिया अगर कोई है जिसको कह सकते हैं इफेक्टिव माध्यम जो रहा है वो है हमारा अपनी इंफॉर्मेशन हमारे जो एजुकेशन है उसके कम्युनिकेशन कैसे कर सकते हैं शायद सोशल मीडिया के माध्यम से करें मीडिया कैंपेन्स के माध्यम से करें वेबसाइट के माध्यम से करें शायद हम कुछ स्मॉल वीडियोज के माध्यम से करें यूट्यूब चैनल्स के माध्यम से करें अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करनी होगी ताकि ये फियर ताकि ये बदलाव ताकि ये जो थॉट प्रोसेस है कि क्या करोगे ये स्किल सीख के क्या करोगे ये वोकेशन से क्या करोगे तो वो कहीं ना कहीं ब्रेक हो उसके लिए प्रिपरेशन एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ आप ब्रोशर्स कर सकते हो लीफलेट्स हैं पैम्पलेट्स हैं वीडियो शोज हैं जैसे मैंने कहा वोकेशनल एजुकेशन एंड कोर्सेज हम कुछ सक्सेस स्टोरीज भी ले सकते हैं क्या हम कुछ रोल मॉडल ले सकते हैं कि जिन्होंने स्किल्स पे काम किया और आज वो इतने बड़े इंटरप्रेनर बने हुए हैं या फिर वो खुद अपनी एक इंडस्ट्री चलाते हैं या फिर वो कुछ अपना खुद का बिजनेस कर रहे हैं तो कहाँ से किया तो अर्ली इंटरवेंशन भैया मैंने ये ये सीखा था स्कूल के वक्त में सीखा और उसको मुझे आज यूज हुआ सेकेंड जो चैलेंज है वो इंटीग्रेटिंग वोकेशनल एजुकेशन विद जनरल एजुकेशन विद फोकस ऑन सोशल इंक्लूजन जेंडर इक्वालिटी एंड इंक्लूसिव एजुकेशन आप देखेंगे कि हाँ बड़ा चैलेंज अभी जो लग रहा है कि इसका इंटीग्रेशन कैसे होगा इंटीग्रेट वोकेशनल स्कूल्स विद जनरल एजुकेशन क्योंकि आज तो हार्ड सेपरेशन है आज हम लोग क्या देख रहे हैं कि अगर आपको वोकेशनल लेना है तो आप आईटीआई टी जॉइन कर लीजिए अगर आपको ये करना है तो आप इंजीनियरिंग बैकग्राउंड में चले जाइए अगर आपको ये करना है तो आप उसमें चले जाइए अब वैसा नहीं होगा अब एक सेपरेशन नहीं है वोकेशनल एजुकेशन को जनरल एजुकेशन के साथ में करना है और फोकस किसके ऊपर करना है कि ऑल इंक्लूजन है फोकस किस पे करना है कि भैया इसमें कोई भी लिंग भेद नहीं है जेंडर इक्वालिटी है इसमें और इंक्लूसिव है सर्व समावेशक है तो इसको कैसे ला पाएंगे कैसे कर पाएंगे इसमें पहली चीज अगर हमको एक्शन करनी है तो वो होगी इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ स्किल बेस्ड एक्टिविटीज फ्रॉम प्री स्कूल टू ग्रेड ट्वेल्व आपको वो एक्टिविटीज बहुत जल्दी इंट्रोड्यूस करनी पड़ेंगी ताकि वो उनके डीएनए में आए ताकि वो उनके कल्चर में आए ताकि वो उनके सिस्टम में आए आपको ये मालूम है कि कोई भी चीज नहीं जब आती है तो उसको हम कई बार प्रतिकार करते हैं उसका विरोध करते हैं क्योंकि वो हमें कहीं ना कहीं अनकंफर्टेबल करती है कहीं ना कहीं हम जब नया सीखने भी जाते हैं या फिर नया करने के बारे में भी जाते हैं तो शुरू में अनकंफर्टेबल जरूर होता है लेकिन जैसे जैसे वो एक साल दो साल तीन साल में हुआ उसकी एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी बढ़ती है उसकी तरफ हमारा देखने का दृष्टिकोण बदलता है और हम बहुत ज्यादा कंफर्टेबल हो जाते हैं जब वो स्कूल के सिस्टम में आ जाता है अगर वो ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड तक ऐसे ही चल रहा है तो कॉलेजेस में जब बच्चा आता है या फिर लर्नर आएगा तो उसको आश्चर्य करित नहीं लगेगा उसको अचंबित करने वाला कुछ नहीं लगेगा उसको लगेगा कि हाँ ये एक परंपरा है एक ये हेरिटेज है जिसके हिसाब से मुझे आगे जाना तो हम वो कर सकते हैं कि स्किल बेस्ड एक्टिविटीज को प्री स्कूल से लेके स्टैंडर्ड ट्वेल्थ तक हम उसको कैसे ला पाए रिफॉर्मिंग करिकुला करिकुला थ्रू एनहेंस्ड कंटेंट ऑफ वोकेशनल नॉलेज एंड स्किल्स हमें कहीं ना कहीं अपना जो कंटेंट है उसको भी एनहेंस करना होगा वो पारंपरिक पद्धति से देखे नहीं चलेगा वो आ, हमें अर्न लर्न करने का है तो कैसे करेंगे उसको एनरिचिंग एक्सपीरियंस हमारा आ, कैसा हो सकता है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी गोइंग टू प्ले अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल हाउ टू मेक लर्निंग मोर एनरिचिंग आज क्या होता है कि बच्चे होते हैं हमें बोर हो गया है मोनोटोनस लग रहा है तो उसको आपको एनरिच कैसे करना है उस नॉलेज वोकेशनल नॉलेज में स्किल्स कोर्स अलाइनमेंट विद स्किल स्टैंडर्ड and interdisciplinary connection as we all know nep is propagating nep is proposing interdisciplinary rather we say multidisciplinary approach the moment we bring this multidisciplinary multi uh, uh, interdisciplinary approach it makes learning more interesting subjects are interlinked subjects are correlated subjects cannot be seen at hard separations 
UGC elsewhere also used to encourage, can we do research multidisciplinary? We, rather than going, going unilaterally, can we go multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary? So this approach, when we are bringing out for curricular thought, enhanced content, vocational knowledge, and skills, better course alignment with the skill standards and interdisciplinary content. If you bring the interdisciplinary content, probably it's going to make a sea change in the perception. Developing a workplace-related skills and attitudes through internship and on-the-job training. Can we give children hands-on experience? Can we give them something which they will be doing while learning? So it's going to be interesting. Rather than just lecturing, rather than just giving instructions, if the learner is doing the act, is performing the act, is learning while doing it, it enhances. It en enhances the inquisitiveness. It enhances uh, his likelihood to do it again. So can we do that, that we are able to give on-job training? The on-the-job training is something which we all uh, looking forward in the national education policy as I've said, one semester, maybe a specific period of a time is going to be dedicated for each student to go for a hands-on experience. Now, when, we, when a normal graduate passes out, okay, normally he writes in the resume or in the biodata, no past experience because he's just freshly graduate. Probably now the career, uh, CV is going to change, the resume is going to change. The boy or the girl is going to write that she has gone through a six-month internship six months project, six months on the job training while doing the graduation itself. So the moment the, the learner is doing something while doing, okay, is going to make a significant change in the perception. So on the job training is recommended or job instructional trainings are recommended, internships are recommended, apprenticeships are uh, uh, is being uh, recommended. Every conventional college now, because we talk about a con uh, uh, conventional colleges and non-conventional colleges or professional colleges, most of the professional colleges do have placement offices. Most have, uh, you may say, uh, placement agencies associated with it. Probably, probably not probably, it's going to happen that the conventional colleges will also have a placement officer in shape of doing enriching programs to see that what matches with which industry, what, which subject goes well with a particular interface, okay? So we're going to have placement officers coming also into the conventional colleges where vocational skills are going to be re-emphasized with the on-the-job training. So the perception is going to change. Introduction of vocational interest inventory in the grade 8, as I already mentioned, skill-based aptitude test at grade 10 for the guidance to the students making informed career choices. In Maharashtra, uh, where the student who is appearing for the 10th standard exam has to go through a color chachani, that is an aptitude test, which gives the child a fair idea where his aptitude or aptitude lies. Whether the child is okay for the vocational course, whether he would like to go for a, a medical engineering, dentist, or some other career as such, a basic indication is being given when the child is facing the 10th standard itself. So earlier, if I come to know that I'm having this potential, the aptitude is also a hidden potential. It is not a visible potential. It's a hidden potential. Sometimes the hidden potential are uh, known to the children, but sometimes they are not known to the learner. So can we have an aptitude test? which can be introduced at the standard 10th itself, so that when they are getting into uh, an open learning area, okay, he or she is going to make a more conscious choice. A conscious choice which aligns with interest, which aligns with his or her aptitude, which matches with his personality at times, so that they can do wonderfully well. So early intervention, uh, working on the skill potentialities, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have to do it, you have to do it. If you have
कि मे, मेरी क्षमता कौन सी है एक क्षमता मापन चाचनी के माध्यम से तो मुझे लगता है कि काफी बड़ा एक काम हो सकता है कि बच्चा कंफ्यूज नहीं रहेगा वो काफी ज्यादा स्ट्रीम रहेगा थॉट प्रोसेस उसका क्लियर रहेगा मुझे क्या करना है क्योंकि मुझे में ये काबिलियत है तो वो काबिलियत की पहचान अगर जल्दी हो जाए और कई बोर्ड्स में दसवीं के बोर्ड्स में वो एक मैंडेटरी कंपोनेंट लाया गया है कि बच्चों को वो टेस्ट देनी है और ये टेस्ट कुछ आ, बहुत ज्यादा डिफिकल्ट नहीं होती है जिसमें आपको बहुत ज्यादा अपने ओपिनियंस और प्रोसेस पे काम करना होता है उस हिसाब से वो टेस्ट होती है और लेंदी भी नहीं होती तो एक जिसको कह सकते हैं कि ग्रेड टेंथ के बच्चों को गाइडेंस करने के लिए एप्टीट्यूड टेस्ट का हम लोग यूज कर सकते हैं इंश्योरिंग दैट द क्वालिफिकेशन रिलेवेंट टू परसिव्ड सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक नीड्स आपको ये भी देखना होगा कि कौन सिखा रहा है आपको कौन आपको फैसिलिटेट कर रहा है लर्निंग कौन दे रहा है उसकी क्वालिफिकेशन क्या है वो मार्केट की जो जो रिक्वायरमेंट है उससे मैच हो रही है कि नहीं हो रही है कितना हो रही है कैसे हो रही है सो so, एक परसिव्ड सोशल और इकोनॉमिक नीड्स नेशनल ऑक्यूपेशन स्टैंडर्ड्स टू बी डिफाइंड बाय एग्रीड लर्निंग आउटकम्स एंड अप्लाइड कंसिस्टेंटली अक्रॉस ऑल द इंस्टीट्यूशन हम जो भी ऑक्यूपेशन uh, स्टैंडर्ड्स की बात कर रहे हैं वो कहीं ना कहीं लर्निंग आउटकम्स के साथ में मैच होने बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है प्रोसेस बहुत ज्यादा हो गया है लेकिन आउटकम्स मैच नहीं हो रहे हैं प्रॉब्लम इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू हेल्प अस सो वेन वी आर सींग द प्रोसेस we are supposed to see the outcomes are also coming close okay to what the standards require and it should be common across all the institutions you can't have different out uh, you may say standards for different institutions okay we are supposed to have parallel standards at least when it comes to the uh, what i would like to say the outcomes are based processes can differ but outcome should almost be similar across the institution that is the second challenge which we can see when we are implementing uh, skill based education in higher education focus on good practices and innovation by teachers and teaching learning every institution has as we all know nac promotes healthy practices nac nac promotes good practices nac promotes innovations okay and the same thing is apply that can be focus on good practices innovations by teachers what the teachers are doing are they doing certain innovative things are they doing what they are doing in bringing out that happiness component in teaching learning today uh, sorry to say most of the times are the teaching learning process enjoyable are the teaching learning process really enriching are the teaching pro- learning process brings that intrinsic motivation in the child to learn more kya hamari aaj ki shiksha padhti bachchon ko learning ke process mein wo anand de pati hai wo jo wo dhoond raha hai wo usse milta hai usko wo anand se leta hai ya fir ek monotonous mein mil jata hai to kya cheeze hai जो शिक्षक अपने इसमें नवीनतम ला सकता है क्या चीजें हैं जिससे शिक्षक अपने बच्चों का उत्साह बढ़ा सकता है उनकी प्रेरणा को जागृत कर सकता है और उनको एक जिसको कहते हैं स्फूर्ति दे सकता है इंश्योरिंग प्राइवेट सेक्टर पार्टिसिपेशन ये बहुत बार कहा गया है कि हम प्राइवेट पार्टीज को इन्वॉल्व कर सकते हैं उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट कैसे होगा ताकि हम जो भी वोकेशनल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग देना चाहते हैं ताकि वो जो जो शुरू में मैंने बात कही थी कि बहुत ज्यादा गैप रह जाता है हम क्या दे रहे हैं और इंडस्ट्री क्या मांग रही है हम वो दे रहे हैं जो इंडस्ट्री मांग रही है तो बहुत बढ़िया हम वो दे रहे हैं जो इंडस्ट्री को नहीं चाहिए तो शायद कहीं ना कहीं वो गैप बढ़ जाएगा हम अपनी इंडस्ट्रीज की जो रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं उसको हम अपने करिकुलम में एड कर सकते हैं क्या और यथोचित मतलब आप उसको इतना क्लोज रख सकते हैं प्रेरणा कैन यू इंप्रूव योर सेल्फ कैन वी ब्रिज दैट गैप इट्स ऑल अबाउट ब्रिजिंग द गैप इट विल नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन ओवरनाइट बट कैन वी ब्रिज दैट गैप दैट द इंडस्ट्री इज लुकिंग समथिंग सब्सटेंशियल एंड द 
academic is also giving something substantial. So vocational partnership is going to be in a great demand. And that is something which NAP is bringing up for it. At the same time, the next challenge is introducing Loka Vidya, as I've said, indigenous knowledge and skills in the schools through vocational education. This also is easy to say that Loka Vidya should come to school. But how do they come? How do they take it? So, the first action is identifying location, uh, local vocational crafts. Can we make a list? In this sector, which uh, skills are in the parampariq group of Loka Vidya? आप अब बात करें तो काफी लोक विद्याएं अभी विलोप होती जा रही हैं या फिर वो हमें दिख नहीं रही हैं बहुत सारी चीजों में ऑटोमेशन हो चुका है बहुत सारी चीजों में मशीन्स इन्वॉल्व हो चुकी हैं वो अभी क्राफ्टमैनशिप नहीं रहती है हस्तकला नहीं रहती है उसमें निपुणता नहीं दिखती है बहुत सारी चीजें मशीन्स के माध्यम से हो रही हैं कुछ चीजें रोबोट्स के माध्यम से हो रही हैं तो हमारी जो लोक विद्या है या फिर लोक स्किल सेंस को कह सकते हैं वो कहीं हां खत्म तो नहीं होते जा रहे हैं ना उसके लिए क्या कर सकते हैं तो पहले हमें आइडेंटिफाई करना पड़ेगा वोकेशनल क्राफ्ट्स फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इंटर्नशिप फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑन द इंडिजिनस प्रैक्टिस कौन-कौन सी वो लोक कलाएं हैं क्राफ्ट्स हैं जिनको हमें बच्चों तक पहुंचाना है और उनके इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम तैयार करने हैं और वो इंडिजिनस पद्धति से कोई भी चीज बाहर से ना हो इंडिजिनस लोकल हो अपनी लगे अपनी भाषा हो सकती है अपने स्क्राफ्ट्स हो सकते हैं अपनी माध्यम हो सकता है ताकि वो अपना लगे उसमें अपनापन आए जिस चीज में अपनापन आता है वो लर्निंग को फैसिलिटेट करती है जिसमें अपनापन नहीं रहता वो कहीं ना कहीं हमें ऐसा लगता है कि ये पढ़ाई है इसलिए बार-बार कहा जा रहा है कि इंडिजिनियस जितना हो सके उसको लोकली हम लोग अगर गवन कर सके लोकली उसके ऊपर हम लोग काम कर सके तो आ, हो सकता है कि हम लोक विद्या तक पहुंच सके बच्चों को लेके पहुंच सके आइडेंटिफाई लोकल एक्सपर्ट्स एंड कंडक्टिंग इंटर्नशिप ट्रेनिंग फॉर स्टूडेंट्स अब आपको लोकल एक्सपर्ट्स को भी करना होगा शायद उनके पास वो डिग्री ना हो शायद वो उनके पास में वो पेपर ना हो जो हमें एक क्वालिफाइड रिसोर्स पर्सन बन पाए क्योंकि आपको मालूम है कि काफी जगह डॉक्यूमेंट्स की आवश्यकता पड़ती है प्रमाण पत्रों की आवश्यकता पड़ती है और वो प्रमाण पत्र शायद उनके पास ना हो लेकिन उनके पास स्किल है उनके पास वो लोकल एक्सपर्टीज है उनके उनको लेके आना और इंटर्नशिप ट्रेनिंग शुरू करना बच्चों को उसमें इंवॉल्व करना एक दूसरा मार्ग हो सकता है लोक विद्या को प्रचलित करने के लिए लोक विद्या को कॉलेजेस और यूनिवर्सिटीज तक पहुंचाने के लिए कम्युनिटी एंड इंडस्ट्री इंटरेस्ट पार्टनरशिप फॉर द वोकेशनल एक्सपोजर थ्रू इनफॉर्मल इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम अब इस लोक विद्या में बहुत बार आप उसको बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्रक्चर नहीं कर पाओ शायद क्योंकि कुछ होते हैं जो मास्टर्स होते हैं वो अपने स्किल में मास्टर हैं तो शायद वो एक पूरी तरह से करिकुलम ना दे पाए लेकिन वो कह सकते हैं कि आप मेरे अंडर इंटर्नशिप कर सकते हो लेकिन ये इंटर्नशिप कैसी होगी इनफॉर्मल होगी बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्रक्चर नहीं वो अपने माध्यम से चलेंगे वो अपने तरीके से चलेंगे क्योंकि वो उस स्किल के मास्टर हैं ही इज द वन हु नोज कंप्लीटली बहुत सारा अभी ऐसा होता है कि पारंपरिक कलाएं अभी विलोप होती हुई दिख रही हैं बहुत कम लोग रह चुके हैं जिनको उनकी वो पारंपरिक कलाएं मालूम है हम उन एक्सपर्ट्स को कहीं ना कहीं दे सकते हैं करिकुलम में ना ऐड करते हुए लेकिन इनफॉर्मल इंटर्नशिप के माध्यम से वो जो आ, कह सकते हैं कि स्किल है या फिर वो जो कला है जो आज विलोप होते हुए नजर आ रही है वो कहीं ना कहीं खत्म होते हुए नजर आ रही है शायद लोक विद्या के माध्यम से हम उसे पुनर्जीवित कर सकें शायद हम उन्हें फिर से एक जीवन दान दे पाए तो ये बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन हो सकता है एक चैलेंज जरूर है लेकिन उसके लिए मार्ग ये है कि हमें ढूंढने होंगे हमें वो एक्सपर्ट ढूंढने होंगे जिनके पास शायद वो क्वालिफिकेशन ना हो लेकिन जहां तक कौशल्य की बात है जहां पे स्किल की बात है उनके जैसा दूसरा कोई ना हो तो शायद उन्हें हमें वो अपने करिकुलम में ऐड करते हुए इनफॉर्मली ज्यादा योगदान उनका लेना होगा फैसिलिटी हॉरिजॉन्टल मोबिलिटी ऑफ वोकेशनल स्टूडेंट्स इन स्कूल हम लोग हॉरिजॉन्टल मोबिलिटी की बात कर रहे हैं फैसिलिटेट कैसे करेंगे तो हमें पहला करना होगा फैसिलिटेट और जिसका हम बार-बार भी कह रहे हैं जिसके ऊपर कि हमें 
कोलेबोरेटिंग विद इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट जो लोकल आई हैं उनके साथ में कोलेबोरेट करना होगा पॉलिटेक्निक्स हैं उनके साथ में कोलेबोरेट कर सकते हैं लोकल बिजनेस हाउसेस हैं बहुत बड़ी इंडस्ट्रीज ना छोटी हो उनसे कोलेबोरेट कर सकते हैं हॉस्पिटल्स के साथ में कर सकते हैं एग्रीकल्चर फर्म्स आजकल बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर आ रही हैं फूड प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट्स बहुत ज्यादा बड़े पैमाने पर आ रहे हैं फूड को स्टोरेज करने के लिए बहुत बड़े पैमाने पर काम दिख रहा है आपको तो फूड इंडस्ट्री एक पूरी तरह से एक बहुत बड़ा क्षेत्र बनते हुए हमें दिख रहा है लोकल uh, जिसको कह सकते हैं एनजीओ की मदद ले सकते हैं हब्स की मदद ले सकते हैं या फिर हम सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स की भी मदद ले सकते हैं तो हमें फैसिलिटेट करना है कि भैया अभी सीखा है तो कहा जा उनको कहाँ तक दे पाएंगे क्या दे पाएंगे वो ओरिजिनली कहीं पे विकास कर पाएंगे क्या समांतर कहीं पे जा पाएंगे क्या तो उसको अगर हमें पहुंचाना है तो हमें कहीं ना कहीं कही कही हमें लोकल इंडस्ट्रीज लोकल आईटीआई एनजीओ सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स पॉलिटेक्निक बिजनेस हाउसेस हॉस्पिटल्स इनकी कहीं ना कहीं हमें मदद लेनी होगी ताकि उनकी हॉरिजेंटल वोकेशनल जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनकी मोबाइबिलिटी हम लोग कर पाए इंटीग्रेटिंग न्यू एज स्किल्स ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी स्किल्स एंड एंटरप्रीनरशिप एजुकेशन एंड स्किल्स ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है चैलेंज कौन सा है कि हमें ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी में जो न्यू एज स्किल्स हैं इंटरशिप एंटरप्रीनरशिप एजुकेशन में स्कूल्स में वो कैसे ला पाएंगे जाना तो होगा अपने को कैसे ला पाएंगे पहला होगा इंटीग्रेटिंग एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी स्किल्स एट ऑल स्टेजेस ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन सबसे बड़ी बात अगर हम कुछ कर सकते हैं तो वो एम्प्लॉयबिलिटेबल होना चाहिए आप जो भी ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी स्किल देने की बात कर रहे हो वो कहीं ना कहीं एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी अगर दे एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी काम पाए उसको नौकरी दे पाए रोज शायद जो एक स्टिग्मा है एक जो थॉट प्रोसेस है एक जो नजरिया है वो नजरिया शायद बदले वो कब बदलेगा जब हमें एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी जनरेट होते हुए दिखेगी और वो काफी ज्यादा मायने रखती है उसमें इंटीग्रेटिंग न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर द वोकेशनल एजुकेशन ट्रेनिंग प्रिपेयरिंग स्टूडेंट्स फॉर इंडस्ट्रीज हम इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए बच्चों को तैयार कर पा रहे हैं क्या मैं बार बार वो कह रहा हूँ मेरा उसके ऊपर काफी ज्यादा सिग्निफिकेंस है कि हम वो काबिलियत दे पा रहे हैं बच्चों को जो इंडस्ट्रीज मांग रही हैं अगर वो दे पा रहे हैं तो यस हम इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए बच्चों को प्रिपेयर कर रहे बार बार ऐसा होता है मैंने जैसे कहा कि मिसमैच होना मिसफिट होना अंडर प्रिपेयर्ड रहना वोकेशनल स्किल्स के बारे में इतनी ज्यादा मालूम न रहना इनएडुकेसी रहना कमतरता रहना प्रैक्टिकल और थेरी का इम्बेलेंस होना हैंड्स ऑफ जॉन एक्सपीरियंस नहीं रहना ये कहीं ना कहीं हमें बच्चे हमारे कम पड़ते हैं जब वो इंडस्ट्रीज में जाते हैं तो ऐसा कुछ हो सकता है क्या न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज को हमें इंकॉर्पोरेट करना होगा वोकेशनल एजुकेशनल ट्रेनिंग के साथ में वो ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी के जो स्किल्स जो चाहिए ट्रेनिंग जो चाहिए वो तो बच्चों को दे पाएंगे क्या Introducing vocational courses on new and emerging skills demands of the industries. अभी हमें पुरानी जो technology है या फिर पुराने जो skills हैं उनको बहुत ज्यादा तवज्जो दे के उनको बहुत ज्यादा emphasis दे के शायद हम लोग ना कर पाए okay? लेकिन हम new age technology की बात कर रहे हैं ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी की टेक्नोलॉजी की बात कर रहे हैं तो उसमें कौन से हैं उसमें एक आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बहुत बड़ा काम कर रहा है आज आपको मालूम कृत्रिम बुद्धिमत्ता जो है वो कितनी कितनी चीजों को रिजॉल्व करते हुए दिख रही है आ, कितनी कितनी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज को कम करते हुए दिख रही है आ, कई जगहों पे तो रोबोटिक्स आ चुका है बहुत जगह ऑपरेशनल एस्पेक्ट्स भी रोबोटिक्स कर रोबोस कर रहे हैं आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के मदद से इंटरनेट्स के मदद से ओ प्लेटफॉर्म्स के माध्यम से विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस 
to the enterprise education and will be promoted from sixth grade onwards. आप देखिए कि कक्षा छह के बाद में artificial intelligence आ रहा है coding, decoding आ रहा है बहुत सारी जो 21st फर्स्ट सेंचुरीज में लगने वाले जो स्किल्स हैं वो कहीं ना कहीं इनकॉर्पोरेट होते हुए हमें कब से दिख रहे हैं स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स ऑनवर्ड से छठी से ही कहीं ना कहीं स्किल्स को मजबूती के साथ में रखा जा रहा है इनकॉर्पोरेट किया जा रहा है चाहे वो रोबोटिक्स के बारे में हो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस के बारे में हो या फिर और कुछ हो जिसको हम लोग कटिंग एज टेक्नोलॉजी बोलते हैं धीरे धीरे फेस वाइज मैनर में कक्षा सिक्स छठी से शुरू होकर कक्षा बारहवीं तक और कक्षा बारहवीं के बाद में कॉलेजेस तक ये कहीं ना कहीं इंटीग्रल पार्ट होने वाला है हमारे एजुकेशन का हम स्किल्स को कंप्लीटली अलग और एजुकेशन को अलग शायद इसके आगे ना देख पाए हमें कहीं ना कहीं ये दोनों मर्ज इमर्ज जो हो मर्ज होते हुए दिखेंगे इंटर डिसिप्लिन के माध्यम से होते हुए दिखेंगे एक दूसरे पे निर्भर होते हुए माध्यम से दिखेंगे लेकिन दिखेंगे जो अब इनको आप हार्ड सेपरेशन करके नहीं चल पाओगे अगर हम लोग नहीं कर पाएंगे कि ये वोकेशनल और ये पारंपरिक ऐसा नहीं हो पाएगा कहीं ना कहीं दोनों में हमें बैलेंस करना होगा और वो बैलेंस होगा इंडस्ट्रीज में भी होगा एकेडमिया में भी होगा स्किल में भी होगा और पारंपरिक एजुकेशन में भी होगा तो ये एक जिसको कह सकते हैं कि आ, कुछ चैलेंजेस हैं हम अभी आ, कुछ देर के बाद में इस ब्रेक के बाद में जो दस मिनट में लूंगा आपसे उसके बाद में फिर से हम लोग देखेंगे कि और कौन से चैलेंजेस हैं और क्या है और फिर एनईपी के बारे में और एजुकेशन स्किल डेवलपमेंट के बारे में क्या क्या काम चल रहा है और कैसे चल रहा है उसके बारे में देखेंगे तो हम अभी तीन बज के बत्तीस मिनट हो चुके हैं हम थ्री फोर्टी टी को वापस मिलेंगे तब तक आप अपने कुछ काम अगर रहते हैं तो कर लीजिए थ्री फोर्टी टू को वी आर गोइंग टू कम बैक
Yes, coming back uh, where we left, as we were talking about the challenges and what actions we can take so that we can promote um, skill uh, skilling uh, movement in higher education. We have seen, I'm just uh, continuing from the last point, just a revision of it, that we are supposed to integrate the skills, whichever we are imparting, matching with the 21st century skills. Entrepreneurship education in the school. What, how we can do it, as I've already mentioned, see that integrating employability, because that is where everyone looks for. If I'm giving skilling, whether it is increasing my employability or my market ownership. If I'm going into the market, whether it is giving me what the market is looking for. So we have to see the employability ratio also. At the same time, we are supposed to provide new edge technologies with the help of what I would say, the, the private partnership. And we are supposed to look on artificial intelligence, robotics, and other aspects also. We can't keep ourselves aloof going with the very conventional type of vocational training. So that is something which we all are supposed to see that the percentage of employability should go up. That is one aspect. Promoting online and open vocational education. Now, this is something, another challenge, okay? Because scaling also needs uh, other platforms also. And when we're talking about promoting online and open vocational education, how we are supposed to do it? We, are suppo we can introduce new learning methods with digital to tools like massive open online courses. That is M-O-O-C, massive online courses. Now they are available, okay? We all might have gone through it. Uh, there are platforms through which online educations are being provided. And we also need to be open to these new, uh, what I would say, ideas rather than realities. They are no more ideas. They are almost a reality. We are also being into a work of a world of a virtual world. Four years back, nobody has even thought having an orientation and sensitization on NEP happening through online. All the orientation programs, repression programs, once upon a time used to happen on a, uh, what I would say, offline mode. Today, they all are happening on a hybrid mode. All are happening on a digital mode. So accepting what is happening, okay? Accepting what is required, accepting what is needed, okay? So we are supposed to introduce new learning methods. Can we give them uh, on a mass mass level, okay? As we talk about massive open online courses. Flipped learning and vertical learning methods will be used for teaching. We can use hybrid models, both offline and online, so that utilization of the resource person can be done to the maximum. Utility point has came up at up front, and that is where and we see this online digital kranti, which we normally say. Uh, most of the states are even coming up with online universities. They're providing the basic infrastructure, what is being required. Uh, the states are encouraged by the Central Ministry of Education to go for online one. Uh, and so that reaching to the masses. Now, this can be done for the conventional, which is already being done, as we have many universities who go up with uh, distance mode or online education. But can we do it for the vocational also? So it's a challenge. But yes, that can be provided if we have an effective tool management or technology uh, which can be used. Developing and implementing a holistic assessment and evaluation system. And this is, again, a challenge. Why it's a challenge? Because across universities, across uh, colleges, not I would say colleges, but private universities, autonomous colleges, deemed universities, conventional universities, they do have their own system of implementing an uh, assessment and evaluation. How we are supposed to see that a uh, evaluation and assessment is being done, uh, maybe more of a, you may say, universal level, 
where the people are uh, the evaluation system is more or less same it is not different uh, the assessment system is same it's not different when we talk about C cgp scores when we talk about percentage when we talk about credit when we talk about uh, uh, evaluation of it how we can do it conduct interest assessment and aptitude test to measure special abilities and readiness for learning in various vocational area as i have already mentioned in my previous talk can we conduct an interest assessment the moment i say interest assessment i must know what the learner is interested in it learner may be interested in x and i am offering y learner may be interested y and a i am uh, offering z and b will not going to work out we have to see what is the core interest area of the learner is first of all we are supposed to identify the interest areas whether he wants to have interest in plants whether he has interest in nature whether he has interest in uh, animals whether he has interest in literature whether he has interest in other aspects on uh, communication skills on presentation skills on whatever it may be there may be n numbers of interest areas and these n number of interest areas should be somewhere mentioned should be somewhere assessed and proper assessment once the interest is being done can we go on for an aptitude test the moment i say aptitude test it is something which is about the hidden potential of the child now these all assessments should actually be done at an early age maybe when the child is in a 9th standard 10th standard there is some stability which comes in his interest uh, the aptitudes even which are hidden but the moment i say these hidden aptitudes okay now these hidden aptitudes will remain hidden until and unless they are being brought up front or uh, they are being brought in front of the child now once the hidden potential is being identified then what is next we are supposed to sharpen them we are supposed to strengthen these aptitude okay now whether the child has singing aptitude whether the child has drawing aptitude whether the child has numerical aptitude whether the child has a another aptitude there are n numbers of aptitudes of okay, language aptitude and all can we give the child an environment where he or she can strengthen these aptitudes otherwise knowing that this aptitude is there knowing this ability is there an ability has to be converted into a skill and that skill conversation will going to happen when we are going to give that sort of an environment then that sort of an internship because we need continuous practice on the skill which is once or not on time was a hidden skill hidden potential now it has become up front we are supposed to polish it and that can only be done with continuous rehearsal with continuous hard working practice and then it comes out so aptitude and interest to measure special ability every child has a unique ability one or two some may have multiple abilities okay but we can't say that the child has no ability as such as a teacher as a facilitator i need to identify what is that hidden potential what is that hidden talent what is that hidden interest sometimes interest may be up front okay but others may not be so what is that can we can we work on that and identify that can we measure that special ability or can we see the readiness of learning in various vocational areas can we take it on what i would say on a learning platform can we take it to on a uh, platform where the child is going to enrich these hidden aptitudes work on them and lately shaping them up? because we have to nurture it and we are supposed to transfer it on a actual workplace so that is one area measuring the achievement of learning outcomes the process has gone once the process is done what are the outcomes can we achieve the achievement of learning outcomes through various tools and methods such as checklist group work peer assessment worksheet presentations 
how the child has performed okay an assessment has to be done because ultimately everything has to be evaluated how it is being evaluated how consciously it is being evaluated whether the achievement achieved by the learner is significant enough and this can be done by various methods we can have checklists we can say that we have seen a change in the behavior has changed up to 60% 80% he has become more courageous he is fast learner he takes conscious decisions his decision making is fast he seems to be a risk taking he seems to be a good team member so can we take it uh, something of a peer assessment that how a child how a learner is working at a in a team how a child is working as an independent we have seen over a period of a time people uh, function people show their efficiencies at uh, different levels when they are, are working individually they are superb they are, they are excellent but when it comes to work with the team we find them they are failing it they are not able to accommodate they are not able to adjust they are not able to work along with the team कई बार हमने देखा है कि बच्चे लर्नर्स जो होते हैं वो अकेले में तो बहुत कुछ कर पाते हैं क्योंकि उनको मालूम होता है सारा दारोमदार मेरे पे है मुझे करना है लेकिन जब वो टीम्स में जाते हैं जब वो टीम के साथ में काम करते हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं हमें ऐसा लगता है कि वो उतना अच्छी तरह से कम्युनिकेट नहीं कर पा रहे हैं उतने अच्छे तरीके से अपनी बात को रख नहीं पा रहे हैं या फिर समझ नहीं पा रहे हैं या फिर दूसरों से काम नहीं करवा पा रहे हैं लीडरशिप का इश्यू हो सकता है समझदारी का इश्यू हो सकता है एडजस्टमेंट का इश्यू हो सकता है काफी इश्यूज हो सकते हैं तो हम पीयर असेसमेंट कर सकते हैं पीयर्स की रेटिंग्स ले सकते हैं इंडिविजुअल को परफॉर्म करते हुए भी हम लोग शायद पीयर रेटिंग ले लें हम लोग शायद समझने की कोशिश करें उसको वर्कशीट्स हो सकती है क्योंकि हम लोग सिर्फ पेपर पेंसिल टेस्ट लेने से अच्छा है हम कुछ वर्कशीट दें असाइनमेंट वर्कशीट्स के ऊपर बेस्ड हो सकते हैं रियल लाइफ के बेस्ड हो सकते हैं प्रेजेंटेशन भी हो सकते हैं कि वो जो जो आपने आत्मसात किया है जो आपने सीखा है जो आपकी लर्निंग हुई है वो प्रेजेंटेशन के माध्यम से कैसे दे सकते हैं स्टूडेंट्स के प्रोफाइल्स के माध्यम से या फिर जो एक नया कॉर्पोरेट में भी एक एस्पेक्ट आया वो एस्पेक्ट ऐसा है 360 डिग्री असेसमेंट हर 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 आपको हर एंगल से उस लर्नर को देखना है वो लर्नर कैसा बिहेव करता है अपने पीयर्स के साथ कैसा बिहेव करता है अपने टीचर्स के साथ कैसे बिहेव करता है अपने से सुपीरियर से कैसे बिहेव करता है अपने से छोटे क्लास वाले से कैसे बिहेव करता है अपने कैंटीन वाले से कैसे बिहेव करता है या फिर उसका ओवरऑल बिहेवियरल पैटर्न डिफरेंट सिचुएशन में क्या कैसा होता है और उस वक्त उसका किससे संबंध आ रहा है उसका उस वक्त क्या ओपिनियन बन रहा है उस व्यक्ति के बारे में तो थ्री थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी डिग्री वो कैंपस में एंटर होने से लेके कैंपस में बाहर जाने तक उसका किस किस व्यक्ति से ताल्लुक आ जाता है किस किस व्यक्ति से वो आ, क्या कह सकते हैं हम लोग उसके संबंध आते हैं और उनसे उनकी कैसी डील करता है उनसे उसका व्यवहार कैसा होता है उनका कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स कैसे होते हैं उनसे उसके कराने की क्या स्टाइल होती है स्ट्रेटेजीज कैसे यूज करता है ये सब चीजें 360 डिग्री में आएंगी वो किसी अगर आप किसी इंटर्नशिप पे कर रहे हो तो वो वेंडर से कैसे बात करता है वेंडर से डील्स कैसे करता है वो नोटिंग कैसे करता है वो आइटनरी कैसे मेंटेन करता है उसकी पंक्चुअलिटी कितनी है उसमें विनम्रता कितनी ज्यादा है ये सब चीजें बिहेवियरल भी होती हैं और आउटकम बेस्ड भी होती हैं तो इनको पूरा पूरी तरह से 360 डिग्री पे मतलब हम सिर्फ एक ही एस्पेक्ट से ना देखते हुए अगर आई एम ट्राइंग टू पुट अक्रॉस टू यू कि ओनली मेंटल डोमेन को ना लेते हुए सिर्फ कॉग्नेटिव डोमेन को ना लेते हुए सिर्फ वो कैसे रिप्रोड्यूस कर पा रहा है उसको ना लेते हुए हमें ये देखना होगा कि वो कितने क्रिएटिवली भी उसमें काम कर रहा है क्या उसकी आ, क्रिएटिविटी की क्षमता कितनी ज्यादा है वो निर्णय कैसे ले रहा है उसमें रिस्क टेकिंग बिहेवियर कितना है उसकी डिसीजन मेकिंग फास्ट है कि स्लो है कि इंडसेसिव है क्या है ये सब एस्पेक्ट्स हमारे 360 डिग्री का जब हम इवेल्युएट करते हैं किसी को या फिर उसको मापने की कोशिश करते हैं तो हमें दिखेगा और ये काफी ज्यादा 
लोकप्रिय होते हुए देख रहा है काफी ज्यादा हम इसको कहेंगे इसके ऊपर एम्फोसाइज आज कॉर्पोरेट में भी दिया जाता है आजकल सिर्फ सिंगल पैरा पैरामीटर इवेल्युएशन नहीं होता है सिंगल पैरामीटर से आप असेसमेंट नहीं कर पाते हो आपको बहुत ही वेरियड एंगल से समझना होता है समझने की कोशिश करनी होती है बहुत सारे मल्टीपल रेटर्स से भी लेना होता है सिंगल रेटर से लेके नहीं चलता है आजकल हमें मल्टीपल रेटर्स को लेके चलना होता है और वो मल्टीपल रेटर जो होता है वो जिसको कहें हम कि उस जिसको हम इवेल्युएट करने जा रहे हैं उससे उसका रैपो कैसा है उसको वो कितने सालों से जान रहा है कैसे पहचानता है तो ये सब चीजें Uh, क्योंकि जब हम लोग सिर्फ एकेडमिक्स की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं हम लोग स्किल डेवलपमेंट की बात कर रहे हैं जब हम स्किल डेवलपमेंट की बात कर रहे हैं तो हमें बहुत सारे एंगल से उस व्यक्ति के परफॉर्मेंस को इवेल्युएट और असेस करने की आवश्यकता होती है अगला जो चैलेंज है वो है फॉस्टरिंग वर्टिकल मोबिलिटी हमने देखा हॉरिजेंटल में कैसे जा सकते हैं अब हमें देखना है कि वर्टिकल उसकी अपवर्ड मूवमेंट क्या हो रही है और उस अपवर्ड मूवमेंट स्टूडेंट्स की जो स्कूल्स में सीखा है वो कॉलेजेस में कैसा है उसमें उसको क्या मिल रहा है तो एक्शन क्या ले सकते हैं हम लोग वर्टिकल मोबिलिटी जब लानी है द कोर्सेज अंडर द नेशनल स्किल क्वालिफिकेशन फ्रेमवर्क जैसे हमने पहले बात की एन एफ एन एस क्यू एफ को और द नेशनल हायर एजुकेशन क्वालिफिकेशन फ्रेमवर्क जो एन एच एफ एन एच ई क्यू एफ है शेल प्रोवाइड फॉर द वर्टिकल मोबिलिटी टू द स्टूडेंट विद वोकेशनल सब्जेक्ट एट द स्कूल लेवल जैसे मैंने कहा कि शुरुआत स्कूल से ही अब वो स्कूल्स की जब शुरुआत हो रही है तो हम उसमें देखेंगे कि काफी प्री प्राइम जिसको कह सकते हैं कि बेस नॉलेज या फिर बेस स्किल है जो जिनकी कह सकते हैं कि हमें बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट है फाउंडेशन कोर्सेज हो सकते हैं ओरिएंटेशन कोर्सेज हो सकते हैं जिसमें हम लोग काफी पेरिफरल नॉलेज की बात कर सकते हैं लेकिन जैसे जैसे वो आगे जा रहे हैं जैसे जैसे वो प्रोग्रेस हो रहे हैं क्योंकि हम लोग तो बात कर रहे हैं कि स्किल कब से देना है स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स ऑनवर्ड से देना है आठवीं नौवीं दसवीं ग्यारहवीं बारहवीं और जहां पे हम ये भी बात कर रहे हैं कि हर सेपरेशन रखने नहीं है दोनों को एक उतना ही सिग्निफिकेंस देना है जो नॉर्मली एकेडमिक सब्जेक्ट्स को मिलता है तो उसके लिए क्या करना होगा उसके लिए हमें जो भी सिलेबस जो भी आ, हम लोग बनाने वाले हैं अपग्रेड करने वाले हैं उसमें कहीं ना कहीं नाविन्यता पूर्ण हो उसकी जो टेक्नोलॉजी हो उसका जो कंटेंट हो उसका जो सिलेबस हो वो डिफिकल्टी लेवल बढ़ने वाला होना चाहिए उसमें हम लोग ग्रेडिंग कर सकते हैं उसको लेवल वन लेवल टू लेवल थ्री लेवल फोर लेवल फाइव लेवल सिक्स हम काफी लंबे लेवल तक जा सकते हैं तो वो वर्टिकल मोबिलिटी जो है वो किनको देखने की है जो, जो जिनके बारे में जिनके जो ऑलरेडी कॉन्स्टिट्यूट हो चुके हैं नेशनल स्किल क्वेश्चन क्वालिफिकेशन फ्रेमवर्क जो काफी ज्यादा माइक्रो लेवल में काम करता है व्हेन इट कम्स टू स्किलिंग बहुत माइक्रो लेवल पे होता है कि हर एक छोटे छोटे टास्क को थोड़ा जाता है उसमें क्या क्या इन्वॉल्व है क्या क्या एक्टिविटीज उसमें इन्वॉल्व है तो राइट फ्रॉम कुरियर ट्रैकिंग से लेके डिस्पैचिंग से लेके डिलीवरी uh, तक का पूरा का पूरा जिसको कह सकते हैं वो नेशनल स्किल क्वालिफिकेशन फ्रेमवर्क हजारों की संख्या में छोटे छोटे टास्क को उन्होंने उसमें डिवेल किया इंटरनेशनल लेवल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने आईएलओ ने उसको बहुत माइक्रो लेवल पे उस पर काम किया गया कि क्या 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 जॉब में क्या क्या हो सकता है क्या क्या एलिमेंट्स ऐड हो सकते हैं जिस जो हम आ, किसी भी जॉब को एक्सेप्ट करने से पहले फोर्स ही नहीं कर पाते हैं लेकिन उनने उसको फोर्स ही किया हुआ चाहे वो फिर आपकी नेशनल हायर एजुकेशन क्वालिफिकेशन uh, फ्रेमवर्क हो उसमें उसको बिठाने की कि बच्चे को लगे कि वो प्रोग्रेस कर जो मैंने कक्षा दस या ग्यारहवीं में सीखा या बारहवीं में स्किल के बारे में सीखा उसमें कहीं ना कहीं एक अपवर्ड मोबालिटी दिखे मेरे को मुझे एक वर्टिकल दिखे कि मैं आगे प्रोग्रेस कर रहा हूँ तो उसके लिए हमें काफी ज्यादा अपडेट रहना होगा काफी ज्यादा जिसको कह सकते हैं कि इंडस्ट्रीज के रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से जाना होगा सोशल रिक्वायरमेंट्स के हिसाब से जाना होगा एक्सपेक्टेशंस के हिसाब से जाना होगा गैप्स के हिसाब से जाना होगा और फ्यूचरिस्टिक एस्पेक्ट को ध्यान में रखते हुए जाना होगा हम लोग आज जो डिमांड में उसके हिसाब से नहीं काम कर पाएंगे शायद क्योंकि फ्यूचर में क्या रिक्वायरमेंट बनेगी उसको आज हमें फोर्स ही करना होगा और उस हिसाब से 
टेक्नोलॉजी को अपग्रेड करना उस हिसाब से उसके ऊपर काम करना काफी ज्यादा चैलेंजिंग होगा लेकिन ये सेंस ये दोनों बॉडीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूट हो चुकी हैं और दोनों बॉडीज अपना काम भी करने लगी हुई हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि एक अपवर्ड मोबिलिटी जो होगी या फिर वर्टिकल जो होगा वो आ, काफी सक्षम तरीके से सामने आ सकता है तो उसको भी हमें आ, देखना होगा उसके बाद में एक जो सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है इंश्योरिंग प्रोफेशनल ट्रेनिंग फॉर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ क्वालिटी वोकेशनल टीचर्स ये सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है आज कि हमें वो मनुष्य बल मिल पाएगा क्या आर वी हैविंग दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ अ स्किल्ड माइंडसेट वोकेशनल ट्रेनर्स वर्स क्योंकि हम लोग बहुत पारंपरिक यूनिवर्सिटीज में काम करने वाले प्रोफेसर्स असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर्स प्रोफेसर्स हैं हम लोग जिनका एक माइंडसेट है जिनकी अपनी एक अब तक एक सिस्टम से आए हुए हैं वो लोग उस सिस्टम में अचानक से अगर वोकेशनल आ रहा है इंटर्नशिप आ रही है इंटरप्रिनरशिप आ रही है सॉफ्ट स्किल्स के बारे में काफी कुछ ज्यादा बहुत सारी यूनिवर्सिटीज अभी सॉफ्ट स्किल्स के ऊपर में काम कर रहे हैं क्योंकि हार्ड uh, स्किल्स पे तो काम हो जाता है जिसमें हम बहुत ज्यादा थेरी पे काम कर सकते हैं बहुत ज्यादा प्रैक्टिकल्स के ऊपर काम कर सकते हैं लेकिन अगर मुझे एक सक्सेसफुल इंटरप्रिनर होना है सक्सेसफुल बिजनेस मैन बनना है या फिर मुझे सक्सेसफुल इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट बनना है तो मुझे उतने तक मर्यादित रह के नहीं चलना होगा मुझे वोकेशनल जो जिसको कह सकते हैं कि टेम्परामेंट जो है स्किल्स जो है मुझे वो लगने वाले हैं वो कौन से हो सकते हैं वो क्या हैं टीचर्स तैयार हैं क्या उस चीज को लेने के लिए आर दे रेडी टू लर्न और दे आर द बेस्ट फॉर द स्टूडेंट ओके क्योंकि हमारा माइंडसेट आज भी काफी कुछ एकेडमिक बेस्ड पे है करिकुलम बेस्ड पे है स्किल बेस्ड तक आने में शायद उसमें टाइम लगे लेकिन ये चैलेंज है अपने लिए इंश्योरिंग प्रोफेशनल ट्रेनिंग फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ क्वालिटी वोकेशनल शायद उसके लिए क्या हो सकता है डेवलपिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ वोकेशनल टीचर्स हमें कहीं ना कहीं अपने वोकेशनल टीचर्स की कैपेसिटी को बिल्ड करना होगा उसको हम कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग प्रोग्राम्स आपने देखा होगा कि नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी ने कहीं ना कहीं इसको बहुत ज्यादा सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पोर्टेंस दिया है ट्रेनिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट को कि हर साल मिनिमम 50 आवर्स का ट्रेनिंग अभी मैंडेटरी हो रहा है कि 50 आवर्स का ट्रेनिंग लेना है वो 50 आवर्स का ट्रेनिंग वोकेशनल भी हो सकता है वो फिफ्टी आवर्स का ट्रेनिंग आपके टीचिंग uh, स्किल्स के बारे में हो सकता है रिसर्च के बारे में हो सकता है टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में हो सकता है ट्रांसफर्स के बारे में हो सकता है बहुत सारी चीजों के बारे में हो सकता है लेकिन ये कंपोनेंट अभी मैंडेटरी होते हुए हमें कहीं ना कहीं दिख रहा है राधा हो चुका है कि 50 आर्स का लगेगा तो डेवलपिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ वोकेशनल टीचर्स इन यूज ऑफ इनोवेटिव पैनल ऑफ पैडोलॉजी अप्रोचेस टू टीचिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग मतलब हमें क्या करना दोनों चीजों को एक तो हमें अपने साथ में टेक्नोलॉजी को साथ में लेके चलना है और उस टेक्नोलॉजी को वोकेशनल टीचर्स इनोवेटिव क्या हो सकता है नया क्या हो सकता है जिसको कह सकते हैं कि सृजनशील क्या आ सकता है उसके उस अप्रोचेस को लाना है टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग के दोनों के बारे में टीचिंग तो करनी करनी है लेकिन उससे ट्रेनिंग हो लेकिन ये जो ट्रेनिंग की हम बात बात बार बार बात कर रहे हैं वो हमारी सस्टेनेबल ट्रेनिंग हो रही है क्या वो टिकने वाली है क्या क्या वो सिर्फ जिसको कह सकते हैं कि हम टेम्प्रेरी है क्योंकि ट्रेनिंग वैसे नहीं बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि वो जब हम एक्चुअल वर्कफोर्स पे जाते हैं तो ट्रांसफर करने में कई बार दिक्कत लगती है हमें कि हम उसको उतनी ज्यादा से ट्रांसफर नहीं कर पाते हैं क्योंकि एनवायरमेंट चेंज हो जाता है क्योंकि टेक्नोलॉजी जो है जो हमने कहीं से सीखी है वो हमें वापस दूसरी जगह ट्रांसफर करनी है तो बेस उतना स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं होता है तो हमें ये देखना होगा कि जो भी टीचिंग हुई कर, की जा रही है वो एक तो लर्नर सेंट्रिक हो वो उतनी ज्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग हो वो उतनी ज्यादा उसको पसंद आए और वो उसके माइंड को कहीं ना कहीं कंसल्ट की गई हो बहुत ज्यादा सिग्निफिकेंट है कि लर्नर क्या कौन सा मेथड चाहता है ट्रेनिंग का लर्नर को क्या चाहिए लर्नर की तैयारी है क्या वो रिसेप्टिव है क्या 
अभी जैसे हम लोग देखते हैं हम लोग ऑनलाइन सेंसिटाइजेशन के प्रोग्राम्स के बारे में देखते हैं तो काफी आप में से काफी लोग संजीदगा होंगे ओके लेकिन नॉर्मली ऐसा होता है कि आ, एक टिकमक भी हो जा रहा है हाँ हमें कुछ सुनने को मिल रहा है आ, मुझे तो ये मेथड बहुत ज्यादा अच्छा नहीं लगता ऐसा किसी का विचार हो सकता है किसी को लगता नहीं मुझे तो ऑफलाइन ही चाहिए था तो मैं ज्यादा अच्छी तरह से समझ पाता या समझ पाती या फिर मैं प्रश्न पूछ पाता पूछ पाती लेकिन अब ट्रेनिंग चल रही है या फिर सेंसिटाइजेशन का प्रोग्राम चल रहा है अभी आप सब लोगों ने ये सोचना बहुत जरूरी है कि ये कहाँ तक कितना सक्सेसफुल हो पा रहा है वही चीज कहीं ना कहीं अगर हमें प्रोफेशनल ट्रेनिंग लानी है और प्रिपरेशन करनी है क्वालिटी वोकेशनल टीचर्स में तो हमें ये जरूर देखना होगा कि लर्नर्स क्या चाहते हैं लर्नर्स को हमें कहीं ना कहीं फोकल पॉइंट पे रखना होगा कि लर्नर्स की क्या जरूरत है और वो मेरी ट्रेनिंग से पूरी हो रही है क्या मैं उसको वो दे पा रहा हूँ जो वो बेसिकली इनविजन कर रहा है शायद कई बार ऐसा होता है कि वो नहीं हो पाता है शायद वो कहीं ना कहीं गैप रह जाता है शायद कहीं ना कहीं लर्नर कुछ और अपेक्षा करता है और जो टीचर है कुछ और देता है तो टीचिंग लर्निंग जो प्रोसेस है कहने का मकसद मेरा है कि वो कितना ज्यादा एनरिच कर रहा है तो कितना ज्यादा आनंद दे रहा है आपको खुशी मिल रही है क्या उस प्रोसेस से इफ यू आर हैप्पी विद द प्रोसेस प्रोबेबली द आउटकम इज गोइंग टू बी गुड बट समाइम्स द प्रोसेस इज हार्ड बट द आउटकम इज गुड वी हैव टू सी बोथ कैन वी मेक द प्रोसेस ऑल्सो इंटरेस्टिंग can we see that the process is enriching so that the learning remains sustainable that is what the point i am trying to put across learning should become sustainable it should become enjoyable it should become that the learner seeks that sort of a learning that is one pre service training and short term training courses for preparing vocational teachers trainers through online offline modes to be offered through state councils of education or research cscrt और डिस्ट्रिक्ट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन शायद आगे जाके ये कहीं ना कहीं जब वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग की बात हम लोग कर रहे हैं स्किल डेवलपमेंट की बात हायर एजुकेशन में कर रहे हैं तो ये कहीं ना कहीं ऐसा आएगा आगे जाके कि जिस टीचर को इसमें वेंचर करना है जिस फैकल्टी को इसमें वेंचर करना है अगर उसको चॉइसिस कम रहेंगी उसने कहीं ना कहीं प्री सर्विस ट्रेनिंग उसकी होनी जरूरी होगी प्री सर्विस मीन्स बिफोर ज्वाइनिंग द job before join accepting the uh, responsibility of a faculty what is going to be required is aapne pre training liya hai kya ab wo course koi bhi ho sakta hai wo cyber security ka ho chahe wo aapke artificial intelligence ke bare mein ho chahe wo uh, environment ke bare mein ho chahe wo language ke bare mein ho chahe wo language development ke bare mein ho uh, teaching learning modules ke bare mein ho agar jab hum bed ki baat kar rahe hain to aapke paas प्री सर्विस ट्रेनिंग है क्या शॉर्ट टर्म ट्रेनिंग कोर्सेस हम लोग वोकेशनल में हमारे पास कुछ हुए हैं क्या वो एक प्री रिक्वेस्टिक होने वाली है और कहीं ना कहीं जैसे जैसा कहा गया है कि मैंडरी जब होगा तो स्टेट काउंसिल्स जो एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग में काम कर रहे हैं वो अपने अपना एक प्रोग्राम जरूर लाएंगे ताकि हम अपने टीचर्स को वोकेशनल एजुकेशन की तरफ मोटिवेट करें क्योंकि अब वैसा नहीं रहेगा कि मैं सिर्फ मेरा सब्जेक्ट सिखा रहा हूं मुझे शायद मेरे साथ में कुछ और वोकेशनल स्किल्स को भी एनहेंस करना होगा जो आज हम लोग सॉफ्ट स्किल्स के माध्यम से कर रहे हैं लेकिन कहीं ना कहीं जहां पे टेक्निकल सब्जेक्ट्स हैं जहां पे आपको मालूम है कि नहीं इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन आएगा जहां पे टेस्टिंग होगी जहां पे ये होगा वहां पर हमें हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपीरियंस टीचर्स को खुद लेने होंगे थ्रू वेरियस स्टेट एजेंसी और थ्रू some national agencies also because national agencies are coming in a big way okay, how we are supposed to upgrade the skills of our own existing teachers unke upgradation ko kaise hoga to short term courses bhi design ho sakte hain long term courses bhi design ho sakte hain aur inka program jo hoga wo district institutes of educational training dia jisko dieits bolte hain state mein districts ke madhyam se chalti hain aur jab state level pe aati hain to state जिसको कह सकते हैं काउंसिल ऑफ एजुकेशन रिसर्च जैसे महाराष्ट्र में यशदा है सीआरटी है ये फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम अभी एन पे बहुत क्लोजली काम हो रहा है बेसिकली स्कूल्स में एन को कैसे लेके जाया जा सकता है 
उसके क्या क्या चैलेंजेस हैं या फिर पैडागॉजी कैसी होगी सिखाने की पद्धति क्या होगी क्योंकि बहुत बड़ा चेंज एनईपी अपेक्षित कर रही है और सबसे बड़ा चेंज अगर किसी में वो अपेक्षित कर रही है तो वो टीचर्स में एक्सपेक्ट कर रही है मोमेंट ऐसे टीचर्स क्योंकि टीचर्स ही एक इतना इन्फ्लुएंशियल फैक्टर है इफ यू टॉक अबाउट स्कूल एजुकेशन कि बच्चे टीचर्स को रोल मॉडल समझ के चलते हैं राधर उनके लिए वो रोल मॉडल ही होते हैं इतना इन्फ्लुएंशियल है और इस इन्फ्लुएंशियल में होते हुए टीचर्स कैसा होना चाहिए टीचर का बिहेवियरल पैटर्न कैसा होना चाहिए टीचर को बच्चे यूरो वर्शिप करते हैं टीचर्स को बच्चे अपने पेरेंट्स से कई बार ज्यादा बिलीव करते हैं तो उनकी इंटीग्रिटी कैसे रहेगी उनका टेम्परामेंट कैसा रहेगा उनकी खुद की इमोशनल स्टेबिलिटी कैसे रहेगी माइंड कैसा रहेगा उनका खुद का फिजिकल जो जिसको हेल्थ कह सकते हैं ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू प्ले अ वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट रोल बिकॉज फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एन ई पी इज मेकिंग टीचर्स शिफ्टिंग देयर कंप्लीट पैटर्न ऑफ एजुकेशन फ्रॉम टीचर सेंट्रिक टू student centric so it's a paradigm shift i would say it is a shift which is going to bring certain imbalances uh, but a lot of positive ripples students are going to be the core uh, subject central figure what the student want and accordingly the teacher has to prepare that is what i'm saying when it comes to the vocational training yes even the teacher has to be receptive the teacher should have the eagerness to learn new skills whether it is a digital whether it is online whether it is offline whether it is uh, hybrid mode or whatever it may be we all are supposed to be open to receive new ideas i use the word receptive they should be open to accept it ki yes this is there accepting it whole heartedly will bring a positive change so there comes the training so training the teachers with working on the teachers mindsets also sometimes i am a very conventional school thought of a teacher and the conventional school thought of a teacher will not be open for new ideas will not open for the new use of new technologies you might have experienced yourself the teachers those who are close to their retirement should say i don't want to learn this new digital way of teaching i am not going to make my own uh, you may say presentation on a video i am not going to do this because they have a school of a thought that the conventional method of teaching was the best so coming out of that uh, what i would say comfortable zone to new open receptive challenging digital way of learning and keeping the student at the focal keeping the student in the central periphery should bring that positive change what we are looking for in the even in the i was a vocational training external trainers can be called for because definitely okay a teacher may not be a holistic all the way okay sometimes you need an expert and that expert is an expert which we are not so an expert coming in giving on hands on experience through demonstrations through illustrations through uh, by doing it by once and then following up like in job instructional training normally it happens that the uh, the demonstrator actually demonstrate and the teachers follow them or the learner actually follow them. so experts talks uh, trainers coming from different uh, vocational uh, courses can be invited to train teachers at cluster resource center and this is also coming up in a big way cluster resource center as we all know nep has proposed rather they are very serious about this proposition that by 2035 the colleges are going to work in a cluster they are going to be 15 colleges into one 20 colleges into one depending upon the demography depending upon the distance depending upon the terrain but as we all may be aware that okay as on today if we are having almost 45000 institutes of higher education colleges which i want to mean ugc at that time 
and the national education policy is seriously thinking by 2035 we should have 15000 colleges so almost breaking it to 33% or 30% or whatever we are that doesn't mean that the colleges are going to be shut down uh, they are going to be uh, done with no it means that we are supposed to optimize the use of the resources optimal resources should be used by way of clustering them okay and that cluster resource centers through this okay online platform okay now we can reach thousands of people at the same time why to limit ourselves to a very particular classroom of 50 student 100 student or 120 students where the expert talk of a one person can reach to 10 colleges 15 colleges because we don't have a restriction to numbers enrolling into an online program maybe a webinar or a youtube or whatever it may be so clustering is going to happen and that clustering is encouraged okay by 2035 maybe now as i already said we are delayed in implementing and at the same time we all know that education is a state uh, department issue okay central government can frame the policy but the state governments have their own uh, way of interpreting it their own uh, you may say and demographies attached to it their own compulsions at times so they have every right in uh, alterations modifying that but still skill development is something which is is the need of the art whether it is for the schools or whether it is for the colleges so uh, external experts Uh, bringing them to the center giving them a demo and making it learn yes can go a do- long way uh, block resource centers cluster resource centers through uh, district institutes of educational training through polytechnics through itis through autonomous uh, uh, innovative centers as i already mentioned at the beginning we have lot many innovative centers okay innovation centers uh lot many atal trinkling labs almost 10000 pan india in school setups where the thought is that the child should be an innovator at least he she or she should start thinking from that perspective that there is some innovation which is there in the child but it's not coming up front how you can encourage that sort of an environment okay which is going to go a big way so expert stocks experts coming and delivering uh, their thought processes doing it by demonstration as job instructional training is always simplified you do it others follow it so it's by doing uh, learning by doing it hands on experience giving mentorship to the experts resource persons coming and delivering it teachers may go on for a internship program learning by doing it so that sort of an environment where teacher is respected beyond limits at times because right from the childhood if we strongly believe in someone is the teacher at least in the initial 10 15 years of the schooling okay 10 years of the schooling there is a lot of attachment of the student to the teacher okay lately uh, the role model change lately Uh, the situation changes the rural model changes but the initial 5 10 years of the childhood schooling has a greater impact than any minutes so when we talk about a professionally trained we talk about a uh, a person who is basically in harmony with every part of himself or herself and that can bring out what a learner is looking for because if i say you cannot teach anything okay but the students still learn and they learn through uh, imitation they learn through observation they learn through how the teacher is behaving how the faculty is behaving how he is conducting himself or herself in the college whether the ta- because we are supposed to talk about a dignified uh, what i would say uh skill development one who is empathetic one who is concerned one who is loyal one who is integrity as one is punctual because giving skills 
without a samskara without a culture is not going to help us skill development has to go with lot of integrity with lot of values attached to it the moment i say value attached to it i can give you an example okay you always have a something or the other happening at our home front you find it out there is a plumbing issue at your home and your the your tap water is going waste you are not able to do anything to stop that leakage and you call up your plumber and he says i will come after one and a half hour or two hours so the moment one and a half or two hours he coming by the time we have lost quite a significant amount of water which was potable which was drinkable so scaling if you really want to bring a skill or we are aiming to bring it into the youth it has to come up with certain value systems here so there it comes the values cannot be taught of course they cannot be taught but they are learned and these values are learned from whom the values are learned from the teachers or the faculties so a lot of responsibility nep has brought in on the shoulders of the teachers they are supposed to take up okay and values will come up that way. so right from the primary to the higher secondary and to the college education teachers have to have that integrity putting up the values and there comes one famous say can you walk the talk if you really want to bring out that positive change in the learner and that positive change can only come when there is nothing like dual system oh, nothing my. like what i'm saying and what i'm doing okay. there is lot of balance between what i say and what i do there is a homogeneity between what i say and what i do there is an integrity between what i say and what i do and if i really want to be a best instructor because i'm coming on that part preparation of best vocational quality teacher and that's why i'm emphasizing more on it if you really want to become a true teacher a teacher we all feel that we should be respected we all feel that we should be uh, treated well we should be considered as one of the best how we are going to be like that one can be like that only when there is a perfect 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 you become a perfect role model by them where the student should not feel any inhibition coming and talking to you you become a facilitator you become somebody who is trying to uh, not giving the knowledge you are giving knowledge with wisdom you are giving knowledge with uh, your own inputs to it so a teacher need to be well balanced that well balancedness is going to come when there is no uh, what i would say imbalance between the thoughts and the actions so can be a vocational trainer be like that now this fits for everyone it's not only for the vocational trainers it can be a faculty like me you everyone who is listening to this talk if you really want to become the true teacher rather teacher job is to teach i will take it away we need to be a facilitator what nep is actually envisioning right from the beginning of the childhood education is that a teacher need to be a facilitator at a teacher need to be a guide a teacher need to be a helper a teacher need to be someone who is going to create an environment a learning environment which fosters new things coming up and he or she navigates it that is what a true teacher is a very good uh, a vocational trainer is going to be the one who demonstrates the thing so well the one who is projecting it so very well and at the same time the one who is doing the same thing so very well so it's going to be something which is to be related to how you can do things what are you saying and to be a successful or i would like to say the best of the uh, 
trainer, okay, vocational trainer or that way, a faculty, what we can do the best. Learn by yourself first and then go and teach. We sometimes, we, are, we don't know ourselves, okay? But we teach because that's our profession, that's our job, okay? But can we shift? And that shift is going to be, can I, can I do the things which I expect from my students to do? It's good for both vocational as well as the regular courses also. Can I do it? And then I ask my students to do it. It makes a huge difference. When they see my teacher is able to do it, the learning picks up faster. When they see the teacher is not able to do it, the learning hinders. The learning has some stoppages. And that can create issues related to teaching learning process. So we need to be clear that whatever I'm saying is doable, is rational, is possible. It, it can be imagination at the point of the time, but everything has started with an imagination. Nobody has given a damn thought 25 years back that we can have an online session. Okay, Somebody might have propagated it. And at that particular time, everyone might have said, you are a fool. Okay? How, how it is possible that I'm sitting in Calcutta and somebody is talking it from Nasik. I'm sitting in Mumbai and somebody is talking from Dubai. Not possible. Not even the thoughts. People might have been labeled that person as fool. But that's the reality today. So encouraging, fostering that innovative ideas also. Seeing that the child is thinking, the learner is thinking, and he is a creative learner, not a rigid learner, because there is a difference between the rigid and the creative learner. Creative learner is always open, receptive, work on, see that whether it is possible or not. We are supposed to foster innovation in training of teachers through partnership between, as we already said, we cannot bring or we can't go everywhere. Can we have a proper industry uh, academy interface where the students can go in the industries, learn by doing it. Can our syllabus will be so, so, I would like to say, uh, mixed up with that. Okay? It has a lot of practical knowledge into it. It is synchronized in a way where the industry welcome our students. That is something which the national education policy and the skill domain area is actually, actually looking for. Today we see there is a mismatch. Today we see industries are not welcoming our academic uh, degree holders in the way we all look for. They're somewhere told that you are not prepared for the industries. Your mindset is still very much academic. Your mindset is still not so creative. And many of the industries are basically retraining, even after four years of engineering, okay? They retrain the youth to make them what they are looking for. Now, that's a big investment when it comes for the industries. And if we are through the national education policy, we can do the bit that the teachers are preparing, rather helping them to be more what more of an industry asked for, most of the uh, demand for. And for that, we are supposed to upgrade our syllabus from time to time in a very rapid and a smooth manner. At the same time, we are supposed to even keep our faculty improvised. We can't be like, I don't know, I, I, I am a... 1991 recruited teacher. I am now almost on the verge of my retirement. I don't want, I can't do it. No. A teacher has to be receptive. We are supposed to build on the partnerships. These partnerships are going to strengthen our knowledge, wisdom. I'm not using the word information because we have explosion of information. I'm, I'm thinking about something which is about to knowledge and the wisdom because ultimately wisdom has to prevail. And can we do it with the help of partnership between various vocational educational uh, uh, training centers, institutes, industries, research entities, probably as then we are going to make a huge, huge impact when it comes to uh, 
skill and NEP 2020. We are going to take a conscious break again over here and we are going to meet around after 10 minutes. It is going to be 16.42 or 16.43. Till that time, you can take a break. We are going to meet after exactly after 10 minutes.
So we are back. Can you hear my voice? Anyone who can just unmute oneself and say that the voice yes, is sir. clear. Okay. So we'll have another, say, about yes, 30 minutes. And after that, we are going to have a question or questions if you have any, or we will wind up the session. Okay. Is it clear or you have something with the language? Anyone who would like to prefer any specific language as such, apart from Hindi? Consi language okay regi up low and kill Hindi Marathi English. Hindi is a mix. Dono mix. Okay. So I'm a big quick uh just go cash thank you. We are going to try to see a fresh look onto it. Then when we talk about uh NEP 2020 and skill development, we are looking skill development in three contexts. When we talk about skill development. We refer to identifying one's skills gap. Now, the, when we talk about the skill gaps, okay, that means what I am having right now and what is my objective, what I am looking for that I should have that particular sort of a uh, skill. Right now, I know how to work on my smartphone. Okay, that much knowledge I have. But I really want to work on certain applications. So the gap is from some knowledge about the mobile to work on certain applications. So we are supposed to see that, identify one's own skill gaps. Why it is necessary? Because if I know the gap, then I can prepare a curriculum so that it will work wonderfully well. I can't just assume that this is this, uh, this may be the level of skill they have. But I have to see exactly where they stand. And once I see that where they stand, I can see what I can prepare for them. So identifying the skills, number one. Number two is which skills are going to need to be learned, learning new skills. Now, learning new skills is another challenge because we have talked about learning skills which are going to be uh, is going to be required for 21st century okay you can't keep yourself aloof you can't keep yourself ki, i'm not okay with this i'm going to be redundant i'm not going to upskill myself everyone has to upskill or uh, uh, everyone has to upgrade one's own level of what i would say skill and that openness. And the third aspect is improving existing ones. Whatever is there, can I sharpen them? Can I bring more truth to them? Can I bring more weapons to them? Can I bring, can I add more, uh, what I would say, armory to my present skill uh, treasure? I'm, I'm saying treasure. Now, treasure in the sense that we have so many skills. But I need to keep on adding something more. Okay. Uh, we are talking about over here is we are talking about something we uh, need to enhance. Okay. We can't be redundant. Learning new technology has brought so much of a positive change in education today. Okay? The digitalization or digital education today, if we talk about it, okay, has brought remarkable things. Okay. Previously, uh, I can just give an example. Now you have audio books. You can read the books. Okay, uh, you can listen to the books. Okay, if you're so tired at time that you can't read it, but you want to listen it to it, you can have an audio read. Okay, you can use uh, so many ways. Okay, through which your own uh, you may say fatigues is being taken care of. Right, you can enhance your skills. You can make so much of a wonderful presentation with the help of. AI today, okay, with the help of digital world. Okay. So, improving existing ones. Everyone has certain level of skills for sure. But we are supposed to get close to the mastering of them, okay. Then it makes a lot of difference. If I'm content with whatever I know today, probably I will not going to progress. So, if we really want to progress, I need to see that I'm making certain improvement in my skills also, which were there yesterday, whether I'm making a progress today, 
and for that you are supposed to be open receptive and interested even sometimes you are not interested but you are supposed to do it okay but that becomes your part of your job to learn okay you can't say i will not we have seen people learning new skills at the age of 70 also 75 also we have seen our own grandparents okay are using mobiles today smartphones today using digital technology for money transfers withdrawing money investing into the stock markets this all is happening because there is openness to learn there is something that uh, encompasses a broad range of sort of things which we need to learn apart from these hard skills okay there are soft skills also which nep is primarily focusing on because we find our students terribly or miserably fail when they go for uh, interviews when they go for group discussions when they go for uh, group presentations or when they participate in a group activity or they are supposed to handle a project collectively now there are certain soft skills okay that which uh, encompasses communication okay normally whenever we talk about communication we always say how good that uh, orator you are how uh, better you put your thoughts across how you convince uh, how you get your things done in a very soft language polite how you articulate your words how you put it but when we talk about actual communication skills it's a lot of listening skills okay a lot of things which you are supposed to listen and then you are supposed to come up to respond or to react or to say something okay so working on communication that means can you listen can you can you listen and deep listening is required okay you can't be peripheral listener or you just can't be like ha maine suna will not work out because we need somebody who is supposed to articulate it who is going to take steps out of it uh, mm-hmm. you can't keep on telling the person listen to me listen to me listen to me you need a person who is receptive and listening and going to work on to it we need people those who are critical thinkers okay we don't need people those who are normal thinker everyone is thinking normally okay a critical thinker is going to think something of more creative something which is going to be more uh, profitable something which is going to make the job more interesting enriching something which is going to bring some life okay into it so create critical thinking in the most demanding situation okay where people sometimes see to leave okay sometimes they feel it out okay this is the time where i should fly now i don't have the energy to fight okay resilience perseverance values come into it how you are a very good team player okay and for a team player you need to be a very 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 cooperative person okay a cooperation is something which is required at times okay it's not always competition 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 because competition normally brings a winner and a loser okay a winner is always an inflated ego whereas a loser gets into a depression or he gets into uh, negative or sadness or something like that can we bring out a culture where uh, the students are going to feel more cooperative it's something which we are supposed to see as a team work hard skills as we all know are the technical proficiency for which we are working from years together okay and we still find it out even in the hard skills we still find it out that the skills are not matching what the industry is looking for and Sir, that's why they... role number 16 dr rakeshri can you mute yourself okay thank you and why there is a need of bringing skilling into it we know india will have the largest working age group population in the world by 2030 in next 7 years 6 7 years we are going to be be the largest world age group largest probably uh, we are leaving china behind we are leaving so many progressive nations behind us okay? we are going to be a nation which is going to be the largest working age we will become the world exporter in human resources we are already doing it our youth is working pan world okay now today they are not 
we have to find it out the country where you know some of them and they are uh, working from years together with full of inter- integrity into it and if we are going to be the world largest working age population by 2030 we are supposed to create resources which are timelessly sane for global citizen who will go and accommodate in various diversified cultures cultures are different demographies are different religions are different rituals are different and we have to work in a diversified culture and that has to be brought it is necessary to have opportunities of employment for this age group and mere academic education may not suffice the purpose and that is what happens now you have the degree but the skill is missing and when you have the degree but no skills probably the employability goes down we are not able to employ okay we are supposed to create a workforce okay though our target of gross involvement ratio is to reach uh, almost 50% by 2035 okay imagine crores of youths with degrees but this initiative of skill bringing skill development in the higher education probably is going to give us a relief sign of a relief that they are employed we have to see the employability ratio also it's not going to be the job of only technical universities or vocational courses offered by the institutions it is going to be for our conventional faculties okay art science commerce okay this all are being like vocational okay vocational courses you talk about nursing you talk about health sector you talk about engineering you talk about uh other courses okay they all are being driven by the technology they are all being driven by the skills okay so over there employability is not going to be a big question the question is going to be about our graduates okay we are looking for giving them that shot in their arm that they are also employable and they are also good workforce with a lot of skills with them to realize the full potential of india such demographic dividend okay we have a the biggest dividend in the world of the demographic dividend okay? the moment i say demographic dividend means we have almost three seasons of okay? we have winter we have summer we have cold we have what not okay? right now we have a scorching heat okay almost the temperatures are touching 37 38 at the same time we have winters where the temperature dips to 1 degree 2 degree 3 degrees okay we have rains we have spring we have every season which other countries may be jealous of as a as a country okay so uh, a demographic dividend is essential to equip the young generation with skills of various traits so we can give the world uh, uh, what i would say skill uh, youth with diversified skills with diversified trades they can work in different trades in some countries it's all about fishery in some countries is all about tourism in some countries is all about uh, software in some countries but in uh, india we can have all these things in, in a same same country we can have medicines we can have uh, agro based industries we can have tourism based industries we can have production based you know we can have uh, manufacturing uh, industries we have knowledge based industries we can have software as you all know that india is the uh, the probably uh, what i would say only country in the world which which provides the best of the mind best of the brain to the world when it comes to the software when it comes even for the hardware okay we know about silicon valley in in uh, america okay we know many of these uh, you may say provinces of the world wide which are being governed by india which are being taken care by indian uh, youth when it comes to the skilling and computers and all the software and all so the talent skill gap exists still at various level and is significant and it is affecting employability scenario in almost in every sector that is the area of concern for us that there is a talent skill gap we have talent okay we have, we don't doubt about the talent which uh, uh, youth of india is having but there is a gap and the gap is huge okay and this nep is going to bring a silver lining okay 
And if we work in integrity, we bring it out that probably this is going to make a huge difference between the gap and the talent which we have. Talent needs what the talent needs, an opportunity. Talent needs what a platform. Talent needs what can we give them a course which can which can narrow down this gap. And that is what the NEP when it comes to the skill domain is going to do. Due to this gap, businessmen are unable to find and recruit talent that matches their expectation due to lack of futuristic skills. We are not talking about the skills which the industry is looking for today. Industries are not meant for something which they look for today. They are looking for something for the future. And that futuristic approach in our academy, when it comes to the skill that we and when it comes even to the academies, I would sorry to say it's missing. Because industries are not satisfied with what we are offering okay, for the academics. We need to tune. We need to tune and ourselves that it actually, actually works well with industries also. So somewhere that gap has to be bridged in. The major reasons for this in NFSE in our education system, along with the companies not prioritizing on job training, why it is happening? Because our culture, our system of education is not prioritizing that what the industries are looking for. Industry is looking for what? On job training. Okay. And even the youth today calls for on job training. Okay. We have seen that uh, the central government jobs or the state government jobs are shrinking now. Okay. That's a fact. I mean, you cannot deny that fact. Okay. The state owned employability is going to reduce, reduce, reduce further, and we are supposed to work on the alternative job opportunities. And these alternative job opportunities are going to be what? Industries, whether it is service sector, whether it is uh, manufacturing unit, whether it is processing unit, whether it is whatever it may be. But we are supposed to equip our youth with that sort of thing. NEP 2020 will help bridge this gap by providing students with industry relevant skills so as to make them future ready professionals. I mentioned it in the past uh, two and a half hour lecture. NEP is trying to bring out that way of what I would say, not the hope, but it's going to be a reality. Until and unless we put our efforts collectively together. Because I see a teacher of complete game changer, a teacher of facilitator, which I'm normally talking about, a game changer, where he or she has to be sensitized equally about what NEP is looking for, what it is. And I think that's the whole uh, reason that we are on this platform, sensitizing our teachers that NEP is this, NEP wants this. But as a teacher, my role becomes so significant because I'm going to be the one who's going to take it. If I'm not going to take it up, probably yes, we were not able to create the future ready professionals which the industries are looking for. You may be again questioning employability of the student will have to be addressed in a planned manner and in a futuristic vision. It has to be planned. We just can't say it is not unplanned. We are supposed to plan. We have to plan it in a phase wise manner. We may have to plan it out year wise because nowadays accreditation committees, NAG, whether it's for National Board of Accreditation. They all talk about employability. They all talk about student progression. They all talk about student support. What is your student doing after graduation? Is he employable? Is he a person who become an entrepreneur? Is he a one who is getting into startups? Is he something who is doing different? Is he doing something uh, in industries today? Okay. There are many, many, many support systems. Okay. Uh, where the student can go tomorrow, but he or she should have equal, what I would say, uh, knowledge about the skill which the industry is asking for. NEP 2020 has advocated for the integration of vocational education program into mainstream education and education institution in a phased manner. We are talking about it. It is going to be an integration. It cannot be hard separations anymore. You will not going to have a complete humanities building, a com completely management building, or a completely science building. We are going to have integration of other subjects, other skills, other faculties, other domains in the same premises. 
as we are all advocating more advocacy is being done about interdisciplinary multidisciplinary so many things are coming up okay yes at times it looks like we are overwhelmed with it but we have to do it in a clean way we are supposed to do it in a phased manner nobody is in a hurry but yes there are timelines to it and when we have the timelines we are focused we can do it but if we don't have a timeline ho jayega to kuch nahi hoga karna hoga usko aur usko hame mainstream education institutions ke sath mein lana hoga kyunki aaj bhi agar aap dekhen to maximum colleges aaj bhi hame arts science commerce ki degree dete hain aaj bhi hame vocational degree dene wale colleges ki sankhya kam hai aaj bhi paramparik ya fir aap ayurved ke liye ya fir homeopath ke liye ya fir apne normal doctors ki baat kar lijiye nurses ki baat ये इतने ज्यादा नहीं है जितने हमारे करीब करीब पैंसठ साठ से पैंसठ परसेंट का जो डोमेन है वो आज भी हमारा काफी कन्वेंशनल स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन दे रहा है उसमें हमें वोकेशनलाइजेशन लाना है तो चैलेंज बहुत बड़ा है नो डाउट अबाउट इट लेकिन अगर हम उसको फेस माइनर करें या फिर जिसको कह सकते हैं स्टेप बाय स्टेप करें तो वो इम्पॉसिबल भी नहीं है वो पॉसिबल हो सकेगा फर्दर इंपेंस that vocational courses will be available to student enrolled in all bachelor's degree ab ab koi bhi bachelor degree le lijiye chahe wo 3 saal ki lijiye ya 4 saal ki lijiye kyunki ne bhi ne wo hame diya hai like provision kiya hai ki hum 4 degree ki course mein bhi ja sakte hain isme se ek semester pura jo hoga wo either internship pe hoga ya fir usse ja ke job karna hoga koi bhi degree aap aaj without internship without uh, इस पे नहीं जा पाओगे हमें इंटर्नशिप करनी होगी या फिर हमें जाके वहां पे हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपीरियंस लेने के लिए काम करना होगी धोखा इंटरप्रिनरशिप भी कर तो कन्वेंशनल कॉलेजेस में जो भी बच्चा एनरोल करेगा उसको भी लेना है इंक्लूडिंग फोर इयर्स मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी बैचलर्स प्रोग्राम सब में एक कंपोनेंट और ये कंपोनेंट लाजमी कंपोनेंट है ये कंपोनेंट मैंडेटरी कंपोनेंट है क्या होता है जब तक उसको ऑप्शनल में रखा जाता है तो वो रिजल्ट्स नहीं मिलते हैं जो हम अपेक्षित करते हैं लेकिन जब वो कुछ मैंडेटरी होता है तब हमें उसका कहीं ना कहीं इम्पैक्ट दिखता है और हम हमें उसकी यूटिलिटी भी दिखती है कई बार उसकी कुछ खामियां होती है जिसके ऊपर वर्कआउट किया जा सकता है और वो करते भी हैं लेकिन मैंडेटरी होना बहुत ज्यादा आवश्यक है और उसको मैंडेटरी किया जा रहा है और इसी के इसमें रिकोगनाइजिंग द रोल ऑफ एनई पी इन द स्किल डेवलपमेंट द गवर्नमेंट हैज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एन एग्जॉस्टिव फ्रेमवर्क दैट इंटीग्रेट स्किल डेवलपमेंट अक्रॉस ऑल एजुकेशनल लेवल्स हर जगह में हर डोमेन में हर मिनिस्ट्री में हर एरिया में स्किल डेवलपमेंट की एनईपी के थ्रू माध्यम से बात कर रहे हैं फ्रॉम द फंडामेंटल स्टेज टू द हायर एजुकेशन द एम ऑफ द एन ई पी एस टू एक्वेप स्टूडेंट टू द वाइटल कॉम्पिटेंसीज and abilities to thrive in a rapidly growing world the world is growing very fast and if you talk about artificial intelligence if you talk about digitalization if you talk about how fast the things are moving it's unimaginable and if that is the speed with which the changes are coming up in the technology we can imagine what our curriculum should support or what our curriculum should include probably we are supposed to be more autonomous which the government of india and the government uh, ministry of education is actually in for where we can upgrade our syllabus from from a very rigid system of board of students at the councils and marine councils and all where you can become a, a player in bringing out upgradation in the syllabus fast now as we know it takes more than 6 months 1 year sometimes 2 to 2 years or sometimes we don't change it you know, even for the 3 years 4 years 5 years or ideas to branch it what to be changed but no we are supposed to come out of that mindset that we are supposed to change and why we are supposed to change because we have to survive and only who will survive is going to change it's as simple as that you are not going to survive if you are not going to change the role of any pn skill development is to create a generation of skilled students ready to take up the challenges opportunities of the future let the company say is okay no we have enough we we are overwhelmed with what the educational institutions has given it to us but that state has not reached industry still complain and we should see 
that industry's complaints get listened and listened consciously. You have to listen always something which is not good. Why do this the industry is always complain, 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 complain that your students are not what we look for? Can we work consciously that this urge is being taken care of? This issue is being taken care of. And we we are preparing our students for future challenges, for future uh, requirements of the industries. Steps taken by the government, what the government has done, because ultimately we look upon to the government, what the government has done. The government of India has initiated various conversation, con uh, convergence efforts across skill ecosystem under Skill India mission. They have already established Skill India mission. Under the mission, more than 20 ministries, departments are implementing skill development schemes, programs to enhance skill levels of millions of people, including school children, on pan India basis to create skilled workforce as per the needs of the industry. Can you imagine 20 industries coming together on a single motto? And the motto is what? Create skilled workforce whether it is Ministry of Railway, whether it is Ministry of Road and Transportation, whether it is the Ministry of Shipping and Cooperation, whether it is Ministry of Aviation, whether it is the Ministry of Defense, 20 ministries coming together, looking at a single point agenda. The point agenda is, can we create skilled workforce? And that is a requirement of it. We don't need academics oriented. We need academics, no doubt about it. But we need a shot in the arm and that shot in the arm can only happen when we have a skill with us. Maybe multiple skills, okay? Because industries look for multiple skills nowadays. They can't just go with one specialized skill. And that is also a problem. We need to have multiple skills. The Department of School Education and Literacy is implementing the scheme of vocationalization in school education, I have also mentioned, through Samagra Shiksha by aligning it with aims of Skill India mission. So, Anything which is happening in the top has to begin from the bottom. And it is rightly done in the school setup. Nowadays. Schools are being given that sort of an opportunity that they can open up their own vocational centers because the choice of learning is in the hands of students. The scheme aim at, aims at integrating vocational education with general academic education in all secondary and senior secondary schools. But all will start from 6th and will go up to 20th. And it is going to be integrated. As we have seen, what are the challenges in integration that will bring? But always challenges are something which bring path-breaking discoveries also. So challenges are supposed to be looked upon as something more positive rather than to be seen as a negative. The scheme aims at launching employability and entrepreneurial abilities of the students, providing exposure to work environment and generating awareness among students about various career options so as to enable them to make a choice in accordance with their aptitude, competence, and aspiration, as we have talked about. A proper mechanism is being developed so that we can check the aptitude, the interest, the competency, and the aspirations also, because you can't move without an aspiration, okay? a positive, sincere aspiration that I want to be what I want to be, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be. Can I enjoy my life doing that? Aspiration should be unhappiness okay? at the end of the jail day. We all want to be happy. Anyone who wants to be sad, nobody would say that I want to be sad. So can still bring out that happiness as to be seen. The scheme covers government and government radio school. Every nobody is being kept untouched. It's not only for the government, it's for unaided schools, it is for radio schools, it is for autonomous institutions, it is in state sponsored institutes, central universities. Everyone is included into it. At the secondary level, that is 11, 12 vocational modules offered to students on additional subjects. There are additional subjects which are being offered. Okay? And these at secondary school level, from class 11 to 12, vocational courses are offered as compulsory, 11th and 12th will be compulsory. Before that, it can be additional subject. As I've said, whatever is being made mandatory is accepted, okay? You don't have a choice, you have to pick up. 
within that you will have a choice but you have to pick one vocational course you will be given a five vocational course you have to pick one which interests you which has the competency in you which has an aspiration attached to it so one has to go with that and offering is to done with that the state government have been advised that vocational courses are to be treated at par with academic subjects no disparate discrimination this is valued more this is valued less no both are same both are having the same marks both are going to have the same grade everything other academic subjects and according to a similar status to the scheme of subject no disparity under the scheme employability skill module has been made mandatory part of the vocational course is it consists of communication skill self management skills information and communication technology skill entrepreneurial skill and what i what we normally say as soft development skill we need we are working on hard hard skills no doubt about it but we are supposed to work on the soft skills also the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship is in association with ministry of education is implementing skill hub initiative scheme under pradhan mantri kushal vikas yojana it's initiated whatever is being initiated will take some time shape but yes the intent is there that can we can we and bar our youth with skills skill hubs and nodal skill centers identified to provide skill development and vocational training opportunities to target school dropout now again a special thought process goes we have maximum school dropouts though nep is aiming for a 100% gross enrollment ratio but being a diversified nation being a difficult demography where we have mobility of you uh, say laborers coming from one place to another place there is a chances of dropouts even so considering that dropout uh, uh, dropout education students a step towards implementing integrated skilling through skill hubs a pilot has been launched in january 22 a pilot project is already launched where school dropouts are going to be taken into a hub skill hub and they are going to be trained in that so nep in nutshell uh, as far well as nep 2020 is considered is going to be a game changer and is going to be game changer only when as a teacher when as a facilitator i have that openness to learn and put it across or com- uh, communicate or transfer it to my students so a lot of integrity a lot of tuning in a lot of res- receptivity on the part of the teacher okay uh, facilitator is what is going to make a huge impact as always i say uh nep is a very very good document in letter we as a teacher has a collective responsibility to bring the spirit and if we are able to bring the spirit yes we will make a difference in the skill development sector also we are not going to be termed as institutions which are being giving only academic academic academy probably we are going to be mentioned as the universities the colleges those who are giving hands on experience and the short in arm for the youth so they become more better employable accommodating not only for indian companies but for the multinational companies also so a lot of uh what i would say emphasis is being put into a uh, skilling uh, in the nep and we all are supposed to be open to learn new things and we have to be because we don't have much options okay and uh, we can't exercise much of the options but the thing is as i said the paradigm shift is from teacher center to student center and that is going to be the the game changer and we are supposed to accept it so if you have questions you are most welcome with your questions and there we have 10 minutes left for to wind up the session so you can put your questions okay you can raise your hand 
rather than uh, after this you can even give your feedback okay because feedback is something which i look forward so now you can start writing your feedback in the chat box okay most of them were writing their attendances roll number this roll number come on 96 has written okay now i would request you can you give your uh, true feedback about the session and if you have any questions you are most welcome to ask the questions and you can ask the question in three languages you you can do in marathi also if anyone is uh, marathi one or you can do in english hindi is always there okay i have seen uh, people sitting from different different areas somebody is sitting in the car somebody is sitting at home somebody is sitting in office somebody is sitting somewhere 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 okay <laughs> Nice session. Everyone is very thank you for the session. Thank you. It's a unmute uh, participant. It's a question over the circuit. Which you have? Ah, question. Pooch सकते हैं. मैंने कहा इनको. They can go for that. Yes, I've already unmuted some people. Oh, but yeah, good, good, good. So, HRDC, we, Doctor uh, Babasa Medical University, give special thanks to them. Or, if any questions, not yet, to anyone. We will wind up for today's. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience, listening from different spaces. I wish you all the very best for your future. Uh, you are supposed to equip yourself with the latest skills. Okay, otherwise we are going to be not going to be at par. Okay, with the world, and a lot of responsibility is on your you now. Thank you very much. So I'm Thank leaving you, the yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.